Live from Tad Gormley Stadium, WHO Sports is proud to bring you the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. Tonight, it's a non-district matchup between two of the top teams in New Orleans as the Edna Carr Cougars face the brother Martin Crusaders. Hello, everybody. Ken Berthelot along with the coach, Wade Kaiser. Tonight, we're going to see two of the very best teams in the state, one in 4A, one in Class 5A, face off. Both are undefeated. Brother Martin started the season by cruising to two evening victories. Edna Carr stepped up in class and beat two 5A teams. A very impressive start for both schools. Tell you what, Ken, these are two heavyweights in the New Orleans area. Both undefeated, like you said. And I tell you what, the biggest thing about both of these teams is this is just a tune-up for when they get to their district, which starts next week. There is a wealth of talent on the field tonight. It all starts with running backs. For the visiting Edna Carr Cougars, we look at Santee Marshall. Santee Marshall, I'll tell you what, a fine running back for the Cougars. He's going to have to carry the ball tonight and carry that rock for the Cougars. Look for number 21 to get loose tonight. He's been averaging 11.8 yards a carry so far in the past two games. Look for him to get loose tonight. The Brother Martin Crusaders, well, they have not only a running back, but one of the best athletes, not only in South Louisiana, but in the nation, that's Bruce Jordan Swilling. Look, Bruce Jordan Swilling is no stranger to the New Orleans area as well as the state of Louisiana. He's one of the best recruits in the state right now, and I tell you what, he can play linebacker, he can play running back. He rushed for over 2,000 yards last year. Look for him to do that this year again. He's on course to do that. Well. Five of the top 25 area players in the South Louisiana area are on this field tonight. I can't wait for kickoff. It's going to be fun. Pull up a chair. Don't leave your TV set. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this on the Thursday night edition of the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. Welcome back to Tad Gormley's City Park Stadium in New Orleans as we get set for the kickoff of this big game between the Edna Carr Cougars and the Brother Martin Crusaders. For a more historical look on tonight's game, let's go field side to Les East. Thanks, Ken. As you guys mentioned, these are two of the best teams in the New Orleans area. Both seem capable of making it to the Superdome in December, but they have different recent histories when it comes to reaching the Superdome. Carr has been there five of the last six seasons, but Brother Martin has only been there one time, and that was back in 1989 when the Crusaders lost to Washita 35-7. But the Crusaders did win their one state championship right here in Tad Gormley Stadium when Coach Bob Conlon's second team defeated St. Augustine 23 to nothing. Ken? Thanks so much, Les. And I can remember Bobby Conlon. Many people remember Bobby Conlon and what he did for this program from 1970 to 1996, coming over from Corrier Zoo when St. Aloysius and uh, Brother Martin had merged into one. Good look at Bryce Brown right there, the head coach of the Edna Carr Cougars in his second year. 11-5 and five took this team to the 
title game in the Louisiana Superdome and lost to Neville last year, but is continuing a program that was built, and he has just raised it to another level. Right, I tell you what, he he's a longtime assistant at Carr, and I tell you what, Don Watney started that program uh, back in its junior high days, and uh, Bryce Brown has kind of carried on the tradition of what Coach Watney put, put in place uh, way, way back uh, years ago. Brother Martin, Coach Mark Bonis in his eighth year, 48 and 30 overall. He has done wonders with this program. Last couple of years in the quarter, he made it to the quarterfinals last year, lost to Catholic, who won the state championship, lost to Curtis in the semifinals, getting Brother Martin that far for the first time in 25 years back in 2014. So he's got this program very close to where he wants it to be and maybe getting back to the Dome this year. Take a look at the weather for tonight's game, and it is nice, 82 degrees. It's cooled off a little bit with some of the uh, thunder showers they've had around town. Winds at about eight miles an hour, and just a gorgeous night for football here in City Park. Last year, these two teams met, and it was a fabulous game. 44 to 41, Brother Martin snuck out of here with the victory. Uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling rushed for 249 yards. Blake Perilu had kicked a 30-yard field goal with a minute remaining to give Brother Martin the win. Carr made a valiant comeback, including an Alden Clark to McMath, race McMath pass, which went 54 yards to the 25-yard line, but time had run out on the Carr Cougars last year, and they dropped a three-point decision to the Brother Martin Crusaders. They'd like a little revenge tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, if we get half of that tonight, we're going to have ourselves an outstanding football game. i tell you what, you have as much athletic talent on that field as any game in high school that you would want. And uh, like you, we mentioned in the pregame, there are a bunch of high school uh, recruits that are out there playing tonight from both sides of the ball. Carr won the toss, and they want the football. No deferring. Bryce Brown says, give us the football. We will receive. And... Uh, Woo. Newman and Luckett are deep. That's saying, let's put our skilled players up against that Brother Morton defense right away. Well, first thing I'm not going to do is kick it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find somebody. I'm going to uh, pooch the ball, sky kick, uh, something of that nature. So we'll see exactly what Brother Martin plans to do with their kicking game right here. This will be a kind of a tell-all. Well, both Luckett, a running back, and Newman, a senior wide receiver are very speedy and two of an excellent crop of skilled players this Edna Carr team has. So you're right, this might be one time when the Crusaders decide they want to sky kick it, keep it short. Zachary Stolberg. I do check that. It'll be Matthew Benati to kick off. And he will sky kick it very short. Our players bump into each other. Won't get anything out of that one, but that eliminates the possibility of a long return by the Carr Cougars. So now into the game for the Carr Cougars comes quarterback Alden Clark. He is a senior. Ran this team for the last few years and has done a great job. An Arkansas State commit. He does everything very well. Loves the little bitty short passes. And thus he has completed 67% of his passes. He can run. He can throw. And is just a master at the Cougar spread offense. On first down at the 33-yard line of Carr for the Cougars. He'll go from the gun, throw the screen on first down to Dewan Dixon, the leading receiver. Dixon has it for a few yards. And Dewan Dixon is just one of those key players we're going to be watching very closely for the Car Cougars. We have a flag down. First play, first penalty of the ball game. Our referee tonight is Eddie Alamore. Personal foul right off the bat, first play of the game. He's going to march him back 15 from the spot of the foul. 
and uh, that's not a good way to start off behind the chains like that. Well, it wiped out a, a good gain by Dixon, who's one of our players to watch, and there are a few other good ones. One you talked about in the open, which is the running back, Sandy Marshall, also. Right, and I'll tell you what, also right there is McGrath, but the Dewan Dixon, great hands, great speed, has been averaging 18.1 yards a catch this year uh, so far in the past two games. He's a burner. So on first down, there's the toss out, and that's caught by McMath, and Race McMath breaks a tackle, and look at him go, these car receivers are so elusive brought down by Ryan Alfonso but the Cougars strike quickly with a big play you see a great pass right out there by Alden to McMath he catches the ball and gets vertical uh, needs to tuck that ball away because I tell you what he'll get poked out real quick but he has some burning speed also 36 yard gain to the brother Martin 40 yard line Alden Clark will run it himself and go nowhere the brother Martin defense stuffs him and we're going to keep an eye on a couple of these players to watch for the Crusader defense including Matthew Clapp and that young man right there who made the tackle Trey Swilling. Well, I'll tell you what, right there also in on that tackle on the option was Jabari Watts. We know about Trey Swilling. He's going to be a uh, Georgia Tech commit. But Jabari Watts is leading this football team in tackles. He's a hard-hitting linebacker who is just everywhere on the field for the Crusaders so far this year. Race McMath again on the catch, and you see the Alden Clark short passing game out of this spread offense that's so effective. He gets the ball there quickly, and if you come up to play the receivers real tight, They'll throw it long and try to burn you. Or they're going to get the ball out into their athletes' hands, and uh, McMath is one of those guys. They've just got a, a plethora of athletes that try to make something happen, and it creates one-on-one -on -one situations which are hard to defend. Third down five at the 35-yard line. This is a speed-up offense. They slow it down on this play. It's going to throw left. Has his man over there, and that again is caught by Dewan Dixon. DD, as we like to call him sometimes up here. Leading receiver, Benjamin Chaplin made the stop. Talking to the Brother Martin coaching staff prior to the game, they were so concerned about how they're going to match up with those number one wide receivers out there, McGrath and uh, DD De Dewan Dixon. I tell you what, great job right there, great tackle. That's how you match up. You make sure you tackle them when they catch the football. Good numbers, 236 yards, two touchdowns. Got a first down for his team on that one. Coming around, Marshall with his first carry. Santee Marshall, look at him, turn the corner on the right side and take it to the house for six. It didn't take the car Cougars long. A 28-yard touchdown run by Santee Marshall. And what a great job of mixing some run and short passes by this Cougar offense on the first drive. I told you prior to the game, Santin Marshall was going to have to carry the rock tonight for any type of running game for Carter to establish. And right there, he breaks off a nice run on a sweep uh, on the outside. They do a great job blocking on the flank, and he uh, gets into the end zone for the first uh, points of the game. But after is good. And the Carr Cougars jump out to an early lead as one of the top running backs in the state, Sant T. Marshall, goes 28 yards to the house. Well, it didn't take the Cougars long. Six plays, 67 yards, a minute and 30 seconds, and they are up on the Brother Martin Crusaders by the score of 7 to nothing. Akeel Durenslat gets set to kick it off. If he goes deep, it'll either be Brady Faust or Bruce Jordan Swilling. 
And let's see, he will take it pretty deep. And this will be Faust for a few. Not bad field position for the Brother Martin Crusaders. As John Paul Pierce trots out on the field. First time we don't see in three years Jake Brogy at quarterback. John Paul Pierce, it's his quarterback, it's his team, it's his offense to run. Got a little nervous in the Jamborees through two interceptions. The coaches told him, settle down, don't force things, just run the offense and don't make mistakes. Two games later, two victories later, once the season starts, well, middle number eight did just that. He has not thrown an interception. He's thrown three touchdowns, and he's made things happen, passing for 425 yards. Bruce Jordan Swilling just handed to him and let him go, and he's close to a first down for the Brother Martin Crusaders. And he's one, of course, of the players we always want to watch after that nine-yard gain, but this Crusader offense is loaded. Oh, it is loaded. We just saw Bruce Stewart swelling right there. But number 21, Eric Lasser, he's an outstanding athlete. He's got great hands, and he does a great job blocking downfield for Bruce George swelling. Paul Boudreaux, outstanding offensive lineman who leads the way for that potent Martin offense. First throw complete to Patrian Hughes, and Hughes will move the chains. He's got that first down brought down by Derek Guyton. Well, this is a great way to get your young quarterback kind of in the tune to what's going on in the game. They move the pocket, they sprint him out to his right, and they hit Patry and Hughes on a curl route for a nice pickup. Good look at Patry and Hughes right there. Big senior, good height, easy target at 6'4". They'll go to him quite often if they can. This time a quarterback keeper, and how about John Paul Pierce rushing? He had 67 yards rushing coming into the game and gets a few more. Now we've got some defensive players to watch because it's never easy when you have to stop <laughs> Bruce Jordan Swilling and a Brother Martin offense. Well, the guy that's going to have to do it up front is Tyler Casby. He's the catalyst on that Cougar defensive line. He's their sack leader. He always seems to be causing some sort of devastation in opponents' backfields. He's going to have to come up big tonight to stop Mr. Swilling. Well, it's spelled a little different, but he's going to have to be the great Casby tonight oh, oh. in this boom. game. There you go. Bruce Jordan starts one way, now decides to go the other, and look at him, just bring people with him, carry tacklers with him. He's so hard to bring down, 6'1", 215 pounds. He's got that drive as a senior. Finally, Quindell Johnson holds on and makes the stop. Tell you what, getting back to John Paul Pierce for a second, we saw him run the ball on the quarterback keep here a few minutes ago. Uh, I'll tell you what. He, the, the biggest thing that he does is he keeps his feet moving, and he's a dual threat, throwing and keeping. You see a good look there, Swilling running the counter tray back to his left right there for a nice pickup. On first down, no surprise here. Back to Bruce Jordan. Swilling just hand it to him and say, we're going to run Bruce Jordan until you prove you can stop him. Well, what Bruce George Swilling gives your offense is it gives you a go-to guy. I mean, when, when you have a, a, an idea that what am I going to do here, I'm going to give the ball to number nine, and he's going to pick up that valuable yardage for us. i tell you what, nice blocking out there by Jeremy Singleton, who wasn't supposed to be playing tonight. They cleared him Wednesday. He had a slight knee injury from last week. And Gould chased him down from behind to make the stop. And here's the gift to Singleton. And Singleton on the carry all the way down near the goal line. He's down to the five-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle by Devin Bush, but flags are down, so this one, who knows, might be coming back. Let's see. Well, I'll tell you what, Singleton need to look pretty good right there and make a nice little jump cut in the hole. Back you up with a little illegal procedure right there. Uh, somebody just quite didn't get set before the play took off. Uh, we got to remember this isn't Canada. You can't have two people moving. So uh, uh, it kind of negates that run. But getting back to Singleton for a second. Ooh, uh, I like what I saw there. Right, the rumor rumor was that he had uh, hurt me. We didn't know if uh, prior to the game he was going to play or not. And, uh, and there he is. They say he got the uh, clearance on Wednesday. And uh, he's ready to go. And I'll tell you what, that knee looked real good right there. Good I know Mark Bonis is glad that uh, he showed that kind of uh, agility on the first run. Singleton to Houston commit. 
because he knows when he's got Singleton as both a wide receiver slash running back and Bruce Jordan Swilling, he's loaded in that backfield. Here goes Singleton again. again. They tried him once. It didn't work. They'll try him again, and he's down inside the 10-yard line. Almost an unstoppable duo, Carroll on the tackle. I'll tell you what, that's a great little rake that Brother Martin's put in. Brother Singleton at the Wildcat position, running the zone read and just pulling the ball and running him up inside. And uh, he's an explosive, explosive athlete. A receiver, Wildcat quarterback, and he'll play some cornerback on defense sometimes. How's that for an all-around athlete for you? Good look at Singleton right there. He's going to take it from the Wildcat again, fake the give, keep it again. He's had success. This time the Cougars stuff him, though, at the 11-yard line. Quindell Johnson was waiting for the play that time. I'll tell you what, Quindell Johnson was sitting right there. He didn't take the fake to uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling, and he was sitting right there in the hole to make the tackle. There's a good look at it. There's number nine right there, Quindell Johnson, making a nice tackle on a really good athlete. That brings up second down and goal. Brother Martin threatening. Cars already on the board. Good look at Quindell. Two pass breaks up, 14 tackles. He's usually in the mix of it. And look at this. Bruce Jordan Swilling just pulls his way down inside the five-yard line. He is so hard to bring down. Carroll finally does. Well, north-south runner. Pad level low, strong hip movement, strong leg movement, really good ball control, has it high and tight. It isn't going to go on the ground. He's uh, he's going to be an outstanding college running back, or some people are looking at him about possibly playing linebacker at the next level. Too. He could play two ways at Georgia Tech. He is a Georgia Tech commit. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this game. Gets the call, bounces off one tackler, and takes another with him on a ride to the end zone for the touchdown. Just Bruce Jordan swilling power. He's so hard to bring down. We'll say it again because it is. Well, it, 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 that is a uh, a statement right there. He, he didn't want not didn't want to be denied. He wanted to get in that end zone. He lowers his shoulders, and that just goes to show you good coaching, teaching the running backs who have that type of skill to be able to get their pad level down and run low to the ground and uh, win the battle of uh, who's the lowest. It's Sam Walters. Had him, and he just took Sam on a ride. And you can't play it any better than that. You just ran into a tank that had momentum, and he took you for a ride into the end zone. And there is the point after. <laughs> Sam Walter is with the PAT. Nice level of his pads right there, and he just runs over the first defender and gets it to the end zone. Bruce Jordan Swilling enjoying a touchdown that ties this game up at 7, 619 to play in the first quarter. Let's take a look at our keys to victory presented all season by Tatchy Insurance in Laplace. Insurance is not for what will happen, but for what could happen. Well, the Cougars got to stay on schedule. That's the thing they have to do. You know, if it's going to get into a scoring fest, they've got to match scoring fest. All right, they've got to match it. And then they got to somehow slow down Bruce Jordan swelling. Now, now the Martin on, on, has got to play keep away. They've got to hold on to the ball like they did on that series, try to keep it out of that high octane offensive car. And somehow they've got to match car speed, especially on the flank with the two real good wide receivers, McGrath and Dixon. Luckett and Newman will be deep. <laughs> Walters didn't kick it to the, the deep man last time, but he will this time. And it is Warren Newman who will return. Again, make something happen. And got some extra yardage near the 40-yard line. So once again, Edna Carr will have good field position starting at the 40. Tackle made by Trey Swilling. Well, Newman picks and pecks his way through there. Martin decides to go deep that time. They have decent coverage, but, uh, you know, are you going to sky kick it to the uh, 35, or are you going to kick it deep and risk a run back? Alden Clark on the first series, 4-4, 57 yards passing. 
loves to just pick you to death with a little short passing game. But he will uncork the bomb, and he's got the arm to throw it. That's his first incompletion of the game. Threw it into traffic. A lot of people there. Pressure, a lot of pressure being applied by Walker, Dylan Walker. Uh, Jabari Watts was right out in the uh, middle of that wide receiver screen, too, causing some uh, distraction, as you say, out right on the perimeter. Let's see if the Crusaders try to apply more pressure, and Clark says, if you do, I'll just take it and run right up the middle, and does, and getting some positive yardage out of that. We are nearing, and we'll get to the hydration break halfway through the first quarter. 5.56 to play in the first. We'll take a break with the players as they hydrate. A great one here so far in the first quarter, tied at seven. The Cougars have it. Good field position after that run by Alden Clark, working out of an empty backfield. Spread offense is spread the length of the field. He will throw to the near side, has Dixon. Dixon breaks a tackle, and Dixon run out of bounds, but moves to chains for a car first down, pushed out finally by Ryan Alfonso. Carr's working against a zone under uh, two deep secondary of Brother Martin. Uh, they've got to give some cushion to these wide receivers, and that's what Carr's doing. They're taking advantage of the cushion, pushing off as far as their, their routes are concerned and coming back to the ball for easy receptions. And not only the cushion, Wade, it's the yards after the catch. That got 14 on that one with some good yards after catch. And here's a toss out to Calfani Simmons, throwing to him for the first time tonight, makes his first reception and is finally stopped by Swilling, Trey Swilling. Uh, McGrath does a nice job blocking for his fellow wide receiver out there, Simmons, on the edge. You'll see it here in a minute. Look at this block right there. Almost had a hold, but official didn't see it. I love it when wide receivers block. That really gets, <laughs> it kind of gets me going. <laughs> but it's, you're a coach. Uh, you expect that out of your receivers. Well, here's the fake toss give to Santi Marshall, and he'll drive up the middle for a few. Got to go up the middle sometimes and keep that defense honest. Well, you can spread the offense out as far as you want to, but you're going to have to be able to make sure, as you said, everything stays honest. So you're going to have to be able to run Santi Marshall in between the tackles some, keep them in there, keep those guys tested, and uh, try to pick up whatever you can. But their bread and butter is out on the, out on, on the uh, flanks. Third, just a little bit longer than two, just a little bit under three. Look at the time that Clark has, has his man, throws, has Dixon. Dixon has the first down. Dixon inside the red zone, and Dixon with a big game, finally brought down by Matthew Alfonso. Lance Lede, the new defensive quarter at Brother Martin, is in a dilemma now. Do I get pressure on by bringing pressure? So that's going to force me to do something different in the secondary. Do I man coverage him to bring pressure? That sort of thing. So do, can I cover him in man? He's got a dilemma that he's dealing with with these athletes. At the 16-yard line, first down. Clark again with room to run and scramble out of the pocket and just throw it away. Flag is down. Smart play by Clark right there, just getting rid of the ball as he's flushed out of the pocket. There's only been one penalty in this game, and it was on the very first play of the game, or maybe two. It might have been the procedure penalty with not enough men lined up. Personal foul, and 
All right, we had a holding penalty right there, which is going to take them back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It's going to back them up a little bit. But we saw this way back on their first uh, series. They had a long first and uh, first and 15 or first and 20. There's your penalty at the top of your screen, right there, top of your screen. You can see a handful of jersey, a hold up on it. You just can't do that. Once again, Clark with a lot of time gets flushed from the pocket. He's got the up throws long. It's intercepted. Trey Swilling on the pick. Here comes Swilling back. And there is Trey Swilling making something happen for the defense. Good anticipation on the ball. And that's one of the things the college recruiters and Georgia Tech loves about him, his anticipation and break on the football. He's a Georgia Tech commit. And I tell you what, uh, all that just kind of forces that in there right there. He throws in a double coverage. You can see that Brother Martin had two defenders all around the intended receiver. Underthrown, thrown off the back foot of Alden Clark. And a great pick right there by Trey Swilling. Good look at him right there. I really like that fancy headband he's got. Pat Swilling's son, and one of the reasons he chose Georgia Tech is because Pat Swilling was an All-American there. That name is familiar. Yes, he is one of the Dome Patrollers with the New Orleans Saints and very proud of what both Trey and Bruce Jordan have done for this Brother Martin Crusader football team. So John Paul Pierce on the fake handoff, throws it behind, low and misses his intended receiver, Jeremy Singleton. The big part of the offensive game today, you're seeing it from the pro level all the way down to the high school level now, is what is called run-pass option, Ken, RPOs. That was an RPO by Brother Martin. They counted the numbers of the car defenders in the box. They pulled the ball away from the running back and tried to hit the receiver on a slant. RPO, it's the new name in offensive football that you're hearing now. John Paul Pierce with just a deep drop. Has a man off the fingertips of Singleton. Well, if Singleton had anything wrong with that knee, I'm not seeing it tonight. He's looking pretty doggone healthy. Well, I tell you what, that's just a little bit of air taken out of that. That would have been a completion down there. He had a step on the uh, hard defender. Uh, possibly, if it would have been on the money, he would have taken that and gone. Well, sometimes a quarterback receiver will get together and say, so close, let's try that one again. Third down, 10. First thing the Crusaders have to do is just move the chains. Play action. Roll, toss, incomplete, intended for Eric Lasser out of the backfield. So the Crusaders are looking at fourth and 10, and the punt team will trot on. Lasser really didn't have a chance right there. Good look at Lasser, a fine wide receiver. The ball was a way overthrown. Didn't give Lasser a chance to catch the ball on the boundary and get his feet in. Now this is a good one between the Brother Martin Crusaders and the Edna Carr Cougars. Newman will be deep. And here's your punt by Sam Walters. Newman, not much on the return. But the Cougars hold, their defense holds, and they've got the football, and we're still tied. Tomorrow night on WHNO, it's a special Friday edition of the John Fourcade Show presented by Veterans Ford. The former Shaw, Ole Miss, and Saints quarterback is joined by co-host Mike Dettelier. They'll look ahead to the football weekend and much more. The John Fourcade Show, tomorrow night at 6, right here on WHNO TV 20. First and 10 for the Cougars. Going straight ahead. Tyreek Luckett with his first run up the middle. There's a good look at Clapp, who anchors that defensive line. Uh, I'll tell you what, he is one of the, uh, the, the, the Clapp, uh, uh, I'll call it legacy at Brother Mark. <laughs> is that the right word? I think there's been a Brother Martin, I think there's been a clap playing at Brother Martin since uh, they became Brother Martin. Goes all the way back to Dad Tommy, and he's uh, a volunteer coach on the sidelines. What a jarring hit after the catch by Anthony Spurlock, and he was really whacked, a 12-yard gain, but Spurlock paid for it that time. 
great stick right there by Alfonso and Swilling. But I tell you what, that's a nice catch by Spurlock holding onto that ball. Got the first down with it. Right up the middle. Here goes Luckett. And Luckett will move the chains again. And uh, you're seeing the skilled prowess of some of these skill position players that the Cougars have. Alfonso on the stop again, a 15 yard gain. So it's gains of 10 and 15 on two plays. And quickly the Cougars are almost to the red zone of the Crusaders. Good look at Luckett right there. He exploded on that inside zone right up the middle. Came into the season with only those nine rushes, and it's just because Santee Marshall gets most of the rushes, and they use this short passing game as they did right there to Anthony Spurlock again on the left side, curling over near the sideline, catching it, going out of bounds. Tell you what, furthermore, just can't get any pressure on uh, Clark. And, and if they can't get pressure on, he's going to sit back there all day with those fine receivers uh, working into little holes and zones, and it, 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 it could get ugly fast. Oh, another first down. Look at the pace. Look how fast they're, they're getting that ball into play. This is a run down near the 10-yard line, and once again, Tyreek Luckett resting Satie Marshall. Brother Martin right there did bring a blitz that time off their right edge. Swilling blitz off the right edge, but they ran the ball right up the middle, and uh, he didn't get a chance to get to the uh, hit. Fast-paced spread option, Indianapolis 500 type offense. Good give again. Good fake again by Alden Clark as he gives that ball to Luckett, and he's just letting Luckett take it right up the middle, and they're getting good yardage out of it that time. So Mont Anderson was in on the tackle. It's an inside zone run play. It's uh, one of the big plays you're seeing out of most offenses now where they're trying to get a body on a body. They give it to the uh, running back right up into the inside tackle zone area, and he uh, squirted through for a nice game. First and goal, option pitch, and that is Santee Marshall into the end zone for the touchdown. Made it look pretty easy, and again, that very fast-paced offense keeps the defense on its heels not on its toes, and Carr shows how powerful they can be with well, what, that spread option offense. they got a nice mix going on here. You know, they're running the ball outside with the option. They're throwing the ball quickly on the flank. They're hitting, hitting nice little curl routes and square ends across the middle, and they're keeping those linebackers and defensive linemen honest inside with the inside zone running game. They have a really nice little mix of offense going on right now. Tell you what, that was an impressive drive. Extremely impressive. You're not kidding. Extra point is good by Akili Durant Slat. And uh, the Cougars have taken the lead by a touchdown, 14 7. Lead option right there. There's no. Uh, excuse me, speed option right there. It's not lead option. There's no lead blocker. They option the uh, outside linebacker. He commits to the quarterback. They give up to the pitch, and he walks into the end zone. SportsNola.com Prep Football, presented by First NBC Bank, premieres Friday night with a non-district matchup between Archbishop Hannon and St. Martins. Catch the Hawks and Saints Friday night at 7, live at SportsNola.com. Well, I'm impressed, very impressed with both of these teams, but especially with this car, fast-paced spread option offense, and Bryce Brown has to just be tickled pink from what he's seen. Outside of maybe a penalty or two, he's got to be very happy with what, what this offense has delivered so far. What's impressive is they uh, uh, they haven't put the ball on the ground. <laughs> they're, they're hitting on all cylinders when it comes to staying in control of their offense. A couple of miscues on uh, a holding penalty and a personal foul. But other than that, I tell you what, these guys are clicking on all cylinders. Six-play drive, took one minute, 58 seconds, covered 59 yards. And the Cougars have a one-touchdown lead over the Crusaders. We're down to the final minute and a half or so of this first quarter. And it has been an explosive one. Now kick it deep. And Faust lets it go out of bounds for the better field position to start this next drive for the Crusaders. So they have a little more than a minute and a half to go in this first quarter. What would well, you rather do here? <laughs> would you rather take the spot of the football or make them kick it again and try to get it in the hands of either Faust or Bruce Jordan? I'm, I'm, I'm making them kick the ball one more time. 
I don't know why you like it, but I'll tell you why I like it. You're always making that, that special teams of the opposing team run down the field, and if they lose one step, that could make the difference in you picking it up and breaking it down the field. Maybe well, they get tired after a while usual, in the heat and humidity. The reason why I would always let them kick it one more time is I, I like to see them uh, possibly put the ball out of bounds again, and it turns into a field position type of thing. And uh, That's what Mark I, Bonice is going to do. Well, I, I don't think he listened to me, but I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just something that I think most coaches would like to see when they're trying to play a field position game against such a high scoring offense like cars. So it, it is about field position. So let's let the uh, kicker kick it one more time. If he puts it out of bound, bounds again, then, you know, I'm sitting pretty good. In nice field position. Yeah, a car had already sent their defense out at the 35 yard line, had to pull him off the field. Put the kicking team back on and get their place kicker, a key Lee Duran slat, number 49 right there, back on the field. This time, since he's been kicking it to the lower part of your screen, to the right side, Brother Martin moves Bruce Jordan swilling over to that right side. Now let's see if Duran slat changes the way he kicks the football. Well, he will. He won't kick it to Bruce Jordan. He'll sky kick it instead. Flags go down again. Well, they sky kick it away from Jordan, all right? So they would have the ball right at the 45-yard line, but Carr hits them late, so they're going to tack on another 15, and they'll have the ball at uh, their own, uh, the Carr 40-yard line. So it pays off making them kick again. That's why I would have kicked again right there. Yeah. <laughs> And a good reason, and that's the fourth <laughs> penalty in this first quarter. And right now, the only thing that's really hurt Carr in this first quarter is penalties. There's your call by Eddie Alamore, dead ball, personal foul. They're going to mark it off, and uh, great field position for the Crusaders as they start their next drive. You know, it's one of those, two where you might run into somebody and hit somebody even on a short kick, but you're trying to jar that ball loose. You're, you're trying to create, maybe force a fumble. I'll tell you what, is is, is, is Bryce Brown watching the uh, our telecast right now? <laughs> a second Instagram. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is, a second Instagram. That's, that's what he's doing. But, no, I'll tell you what that is right now. Uh, the Federation came out uh, clearing last year a rule for all high schools where they can look at video now on the sideline, and that's what he has. He has a Lincoln video hookup to his cameras, which allows him to get the playback of things immediately on the boundary. It's a huge coaching tool. They're doing it in the NFL right now. That's what Bryce Browns was looking at. Well, after the sky kick and the 15-yard personal foul penalty, That gives Brother Martin great, great field position. Right. That's the fifth penalty, 50 yards in penalties for Carr in the first quarter alone with, the, again, just a little over 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. That's hurt him more than anything else. Brother Martin, one penalty for five yards. They got DeMond Harris that time with his hand in the cookie jar. He was a little off sides. Also makes it first and five. You give it to Bruce Jordan. Swilling and five is almost automatic for him, whether he goes inside or outside. He'll do it this time inside. And he's got the first down. They're looking at it on uh, a huge monitor, whereas Bryce Brown was looking at it on a, uh, a pad, computer pad. Any way you look at it, what they're able to look at is their video feed to be able to sit down and show the kids, show the coaching staff to make any adjustments. Good look at Mike LeBlanc right there, the uh, defensive coordinator from uh, Brother Martin. So it's another first down for the Crusaders. Bruce Jordan swilling. Look at that hole by the offensive line. He's pulled down from behind by DeMond Harris. I might have said Mike LeBlanc right now. I stand to be corrected. That was Lance Leday, yeah. the, the fine uh, defensive coordinator from the uh, uh, Crusaders. Boy, big hole right there. Big hole for uh, Swilling to explode through. Also, Bryce Terrence on the stop. 
It's so hard to stop that young man right there when you give him the ball and, and that offensive line, Boudreaux, Anderson, Falgu, Clem, Pro, Fleetwood, Orlando also come in and uh, cycle through on the offensive line. They, they open up a hole on the inside like they're doing right here. And then even if there's just a little slot, Bruce Jordan Swilling is so good at just picking the spot, cutting left, cutting right. He'll take the seams and just continue to move the chains. Saron Fies brings him down. Right there, they pull the backside guard, uh, Paul Bouldreau, and they wrap around with a tight end on the counter play. Uh, Joseph Parenti gives a really nice look for Swilling to uh, hit up in that hole. Good first quarter numbers for Bruce Jordan Swilling. We have played one. Carr has the lead, but Brother Martin is driving, and both of these teams are fired up as Sant T. Marshall scored the first touchdown of the game. Welcome back, Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Les East down on the field. Our entire WHNO television crew, we've got a good one. We start the second quarter of play. Carr leading Brother Morton 14-7, but the Crusaders are driving just inside the 20-yard line of the Cougars. And the Cougars jump flag down. That's Third second. down and one, my goodness. Yeah. Second, yep. second time tonight, that time they got... Uh, the fine uh, defensive linebacker, Tyler, uh, uh, defensive lineman Tyler Casby, but they've got to be doing something with their cadence uh, uh, to be able to pull them off in that particular situation. Whether they're going on two and they're making uh, uh, all types of sounds from the quarterback to be able to draw them off sides. This is the second time it's happened tonight. Six penalties, 55 yards, and that one allows the Crusaders to enjoy a first down. Credit John Paul Pierce for that cadence change, and this is a gift to Bruce Jordan Swilling, and like Marshall Santee, who can stop him? He takes it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Bruce Jordan Swilling. Well, it started we are one extra point away from being tied again. Right, it started up front. Great blocking up front, but I tell you what, when he gets to the sidelines, he better pat his buddy on the back, Jeremy Singleton, because Jeremy Singleton laid the block out on the edge to be able to let him walk into the end zone. Great block by number three, Jeremy Singleton. On the first play of the second quarter, the Crusaders are close to tying this one up. Sam Walters to attempt the point after. And it's good. We are tied with 11.54 to play in the first half. Brother Morton and Carr. Here's another look at, at it. 14. Here's another look at it. Watch Swilling bounce outside. Watch number three. Right there. Just That's got the his block. hands, got his hands right up into him a little bit, shielding him off, allowed Swilling to make his cut to the inside and walk to the end zone. Sometimes the best block is just a good shield. And Singleton was just that for Bruce Jordan. Bruce Jordan Swilling has just now, we'll talk about him in just a moment. 
because right now it's time for Traditions presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905 with locations downtown in Metairie and in Mandeville. Venerable Tad Gormley Stadium celebrates a pair of anniversaries this month. Tomorrow marks 52 years since the Beatles performed in front of a sellout crowd here in 1964. And next week will mark the 10th anniversary of the first football game played here after Hurricane Katrina matching Brother Martin and Higgins. Were you at that concert in 64, Ken? I tried to get there. I couldn't get tickets. <laughs> I was four Five dollars was a lot of money. It was a five dollar ticket, and that was a lot of money back then. I was in high school. <laughs> Les East, downstairs, some of your thoughts. You were probably at that Beatles concert. Yeah, guys, you know, this game's turning into a track meet here with all the touchdowns, and there was quite an interesting track and field meet held here in 1992. It was really the renaissance of Tad Gormley Stadium. $8 million in renovations got the stadium up to speed for the Olympic trials, and we had uh, people such as Carl Lewis and uh, Jackie Joyner Kersey qualifying for the Barcelona Olympics here. It's probably best known for the Butch Reynolds litigation over his uh, drug testing, and also for Dan O'Brien no hiding in the pole vault in the decathlon, but also a lot of uh, Olympians appeared here in 1992. Back to you, Ken. Thanks, Les, and while you were doing that, Brother Martin was getting uh, a little tricky. They tried the onside kick. We have a flag down? I don't know if the ball Wait. went 10 yards. We're going to get the call here in a minute. We'll take another look. Pat? First down. On the ball the ball. First down. All right. Uh, you got it. The ball did not go 10 yards. So I, I think it, it might have gone 10 yards. It might have touched a Brother Martin player within the 10-yard free kick zone. Right there. Looked like it did touch one of the red jerseys. You can see right there that uh, Alfonso, Matthew Alfonso, fell on the ball to recover it, but I think it touched one of the Brother Martin players in the free kick zone. Wow. Well, well, Mark Bonis thought he had it, and that was close, but good eye by the officials to be on the spot to see that. And uh, how about that gamble by Mark Bonis well, right I, here? I, I get it. You know, he's trying to steal like a it. possession. He's trying to steal a possession. I understand exactly what he's doing, trying to get a little momentum. And, uh, you know, I like the call. Well, it does give the Cougars great field position. And this is the first time Santee Marshall has no success running the football. Matthew Clapp, big number 97, the senior. One of the many claps to play for Brother Martin showing why he is one of the big players to watch on this defense. We, we had him down as a player to watch on the defensive line. Well, he's one of the better defensive linemen in the city of New Orleans, and of course he's part of that Clapp family, that uh, great group of athletes, great group of young men. Second down, 11. Go right back to Marshall. Look at him, break tackles, one, two, three, and then finally pull down with an ankle tackle at the 30-yard line, a gain of 20. And that's what makes Santee Marshall just so good. He's got speed, he can cut, but he's elusive and he's strong. Brother Martin is now slanting their defensive front. So they slanted to their left. I think that would have been the weak side of the car offense. They got the block up on the linebacker, which really slipped Santee Marshall into the secondary. Broke three tackles before the fourth tackler finally was able to bring him down. First down, Cougars. Marshall again on the right side. Almost looked like he lost his balance trying to cut and went down, wrapped up in a couple of defenders by the uh, Brother Martin Crusaders. Well, he, I told you that he was going to have to carry the uh, load tonight with the running game, and that's what he's doing. You'll get another light look up right here. Everything's clogged up inside, so his athletic talent allows him to bounce uh, to the outside and pick up a few extra yards. Second down, five. Alden Clark, your quarterback. Excellent in, as we said earlier, directing this offense with a lot of short little passes. But he loves to hand it off. And right now, Santee Marshall is his running back. However, they change, and that's Tyreek Luckett. Tyreek Luckett brought down by Jabari Watts. 
Carr's checking with the sideline right here, and they're playing the numbers game. Uh, Brother Martin's leaving five defenders in the box. You're going to run the ball with five defenders. Three down defensive linemen and two linebackers. That reads run all over the game plan. So that's exactly what they did because they can match up their five offensive linemen on the five guys that are in the box that are in red jerseys. Enough to get a first down. First and ten inside the red zone. Carr driving again. Clark on the keeper. Clark sliding down at the about the 11-yard line. Somont Anderson. I tell you what, this from his this, linebacker position right. makes the tackle. Alden Clark does a great job avoiding that, uh, avoiding that tackle right there. Very smart going down, getting that slide. Uh, I always try to teach my quarterbacks did that. Some did, some didn't. That was a very smart play on his part. He'll run for between 50 and 100 yards a game, but throw for anywhere from 150 to 300. Had 289 against St. Paul's, a 5A club also. With the fake, there's a pass vertically down the field into the end zone. It is caught, touchdown, Anthony Spurlock. And Clark makes it look so easy. Spurlock, again, just one of the many fine wide receivers, a six foot 150 junior, and he gets one on the board. Spurlock runs a great route, gets inside the defender for the slant route or the quick post, and then uh, Clark puts it right on the money. Brother Martin brings a blitz right there, but it's get picked up nicely by that car offensive line. Those guys are doing a great job up front for the Cougars. Well, here comes your point after. Durant slap. Drills it through. And we continue to play. I score a touchdown. Can you come back with one, too? There's Spurlock putting Carr in the lead by seven. What looked like was going to be disaster when it seemed that Brother Martin had recovered an onside kick. Didn't quite go 10 yards before touching a Crusader player. Gave Carr great field position. And in 2 minutes and 50 seconds, they drive 49 yards in six plays and score on the 11 yard pass from Alden Clark to Anthony Spurlock to take a 21 14 lead over the Crusaders. And again, this is a game where I score, you score. Oh, it's like a tennis match. You know, I, I, I don't fault uh, Mark Bernice for the onside kick trying oh, to steal like the possession. It. I like it. It just didn't work out for him. But they're going to have to find some answers uh, defensively. And it's high school football. you got to go for these things. I love it in the coaches' Campbell. This one's going deep. And that is Singleton who got hit really hard. Upset with himself, maybe that he didn't make a cut and go a little further, or maybe upset with the hit, I'm not sure. I think he's upset with the guy that didn't block for him. <laughs> I mean, he's barking at one of his own guys like, hey, I ran up right up your back, give me a little bit better effort. And I get it, he's an emotional player. He wants things to go right out there. He wants everybody to put their uh, best effort forward and somebody misses a block emotional guys have a tendency to get on their teammates about it that's a part of leadership yes it is John Paul Pierce and again taking over for the three-year starter Jake Brogy 
and he has done such a fine job in these first two games after a shaky jamboree and the coaches are so proud of him. Bruce Jordan Swilling running through that hole looked like a man among boys. Well, they're wrapping around their backside guard. I believe that's Paul Boudreaux wrapping up into the hole, creating an isolation type of play for Swilling to hit. Here comes your guard right into your picture. That's number 67, Daryl Anderson, wrapping around into the hole, uh, blocking the linebacker, giving a huge isolation look for Jordan to accelerate up into. 13-yard gain brought down by Quindell Johnson and Chance Carroll. It's just so hard, as we have said so many times before, to stop the big man. This time the fake to him, toss out to Singleton. Singleton with one move, and the second one won't work. Quindell Johnson wrestles him to the ground. We're at Tad Gormley Stadium. Ken Berthel out along with Wade Kaiser. Les East down on the field. Our entire WHO TV crew excited to have you with us in what has been an exciting football game as we are almost to the halfway point of the second quarter. Carr, 21, Brother Morton, 14. Can anybody stop the other's offense? That's the question tonight. Bruce Jordan hit Swilling, hitting the backfield, and he will wrestle his way back to the line of scrimmage. And that might be the first time tonight that Carr has been able to gang tackle him, hit him in the backfield, and then gang tackle him for almost no gain. Well, big Ronell Burbank had his shot right there. <laughs> and he, after he didn't make the tackle, he, he was a little disgusted with himself. But he had a shot right there to stop him in the backfield. And, but, you know, the, the solid, strong, powerful back that Swilling is, he bounces off of it and picks up positive yard. And look, Burbank 6'2", 240, so he's got some beef too, and you can see the collision and how hard it is. Jordan Swilling sometimes, the way he runs through reminds me a lot of Leonard Fournette. And, and just his maturity level and, and his physique and how strong he is. Tries left side this time, not much. Third down long for the Crusaders. Tried a little screen out to Swelling right there, but Tyler Casby does a great job pursuing and getting out there and uh, tackling Swelling for no gain. So now it's third down, 10. Good look at John Paul Pierce right there, who is a, he's a dual threat. We've seen him run the ball already tonight, and he's been throwing the ball very accurately also. Only a junior. He'll quarterback this team for the next two years. Good play action. He's flushed, drops the football, and will lose lots of yardage on that one. Just comes right out of his hands and drops on the ground. A feel for the young man. Sets his feet, keeps his eyes downfield, and just falls out of his hands. and. Smart move, he falls on it to not take any more loss. You know, um, well, all the way back to the 37-yard right. line of the Crusaders forces them to punt the football away. Mark Bonice right there talking to him, telling him what to look for, what to do. Mark Bonice does a great job developing young quarterbacks, and he'll do a great job developing John Paul Pierce. Another flag down here. Eddie Alamore again, our referee. All right, he called a timeout on himself. Uh, I don't know if it's something he's coming over to discuss with Mark Bonice or if he's uh, going to take the heat and humidity timeout. Uh, and that right would here. be the we'll good say. time to take the hydration break because you, you broke the momentum. Let's see what Mark Bonice has to say about it. Yes. We'll take the hydration break, and they will too because there was a timeout on the field. So back in a moment.
We're ready to go with 6.05 to go in the first half for the Martin after the fumble by John Paul Pierce. One of the first mistakes by this Crusader offense in the first half. We'll have to punt the football away on fourth down and 37. That's because Pierce was dropping the way back. Then the football slipped out of his hands. He had to go back and get it. Newman didn't call for the fair catch. He's trying to use the official as a screen and a beautiful shoestring tackle by Bo Rantlett. Nice tackle by Bo Rantlett right there. I tell you what, good coverage and good shoestring tackle. If you're injured on Friday, the Oshner Sports Medicine Institute is open on both the North and South Shore for Saturday morning clinic. Oshner Sports Medicine, the region's most comprehensive sports medicine services. A 43-yard punt by the Crusaders. Flag is down. I believe they threw I a flag. I just saw it. Yeah, just saw the flag. They didn't get the call. They're backing them up. Half the distance. Probably a hold, something of that nature, to back them up that deep into their own territory. Personal foul. Personal foul. There you go. That'll do it too. That'll back you up just as deep as the hold will. That's the third or the fourth one on the night by the uh, Car Cougars. Also makes it first down at 20. They've been in this situation before. Wait a minute. No, nope, it'll be Change first that. and 10. It's going to be first and 10. That's correct. First and 10. So quick throw, incomplete. A little intended miss. for Dewan Dixon, who's right. been a little quiet since the first quarter. Well, there's a little miscommunication right there. When you have miscommunication, you're going to get a chance to catch the football. He went in when he was supposed to go out, or the quarterback thought he was supposed to go out, and he went in. Who knows? They were not on the same page. Second down, 10. Now the Cougars have to be careful. They're backed up to their own eight-yard line. Clark with lots of time. Dropped by Race McMath. You don't see that very often by the big 6'3", 195 senior. He's one of the top receivers in this South Louisiana area. Ranked number nine on Rene Nado's. Well, I think he might have heard footsteps here, Ken. He kind of took his eyes off the ball, yep. and here comes in uh, number 22. I think that is Matthew Alfonso. I uh, knew it was one of the Alfonso uh, brothers and came in and put a good stick on him. Third down, 10. Object here is move the chains. With one protector in the backfield. And a foot in the end zone. Now he'll scramble and is brought down from behind by Vajon Wallace. Well, that's a coverage sack, Ken. I tell you what, Brother Martin, defense right there in the secondary had everybody covered up, nowhere to go with that ball. And uh, right there you had Vajon Wallace coming off the edge to make a tackle. Senior defensive lineman. He's looking, he's looking, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then here comes the senior defensive tackle, Vajon Wallace. Credit the secondary of Brother Martin for that. Good look at Vajon Wallace right there. Three tackles on the season and a sack to his credit. So here's your first punt of the ball game, which we won't get it before we see what the flag is all about. False start by the tight end position of the car punt team. It's going to back them up inside their five yard line. The question is, is Martin going to bring a block or do they set up the return? Lebeau is the punter. Short punt. And then takes a brother Martin roll at the end back inside the 30 yard line. So the Crusaders will have excellent field position with just uh, under five minutes to go here in this first half of play. The first NBC Bank Prep Showcase heads to St. Charles Parish next week as Hondell faces Destrahan in a District 7-5A rivalry matchup. 
Watch it live on SportsNola.com next Friday at 7 and catch the rebroadcast Saturday, September the 24th at noon on WHNO. That's Hanville and Destrahan next week on the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. Should we say the word rivalry with those two? <laughs> I think that's a rivalry. <laughs> first and 10 at the 27-yard line. And Singleton, as dangerous as he is, either as a wide receiver or wildcat runner, runs it this time to move the chains for another first down. It's a great change up that Bonice and Mike LeBlanc, the fine offensive coordinator, the Crusaders do. They bring in Singleton right there. They fake swelling, and he pulls it out and runs the backside keep. Nice pickup. Chance Carroll finally runs him out of bounds, but not till the chains move. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. Crusaders threatening, trailing by seven, trying to tie it up. They fake it to Jordan Swilling. And then the keeper. Singleton not showing any signs of the knee injury that he suffered a little earlier this season. Looks like he might be very healthy because he's made some strong cuts, good runs. Well, he was cleared on Wednesday as I was told by the coaching staff and uh, you know they, they felt like he was ready to go. He didn't want to miss this knowing him and the competitive nature that he has and so he's done a nice job so far tonight. Second down. Look at the hole for Bruce Jordan swilling over the right side. He's inside the five yard line and that'll be first and goal for the Crusaders. Look check that it's going to be third and short. Great blocking up front. Great blocking up front to set up the third and short. He comes right off tackle on the outside stretch play and uh, gets almost down inside the five yard line. Third down and two from the four yard line. Flags down again. Little illegal procedure. This one's going to be, I think, on the Cougars. Well, they got him again. This time, Tyler Casby for the second time tonight. He jumps off sides. I think this is the fourth time tonight that the Cougars have done this. And every time it's happened, John Paul Pierce has been at quarterback. So you're right, it might be something with his cadence. See the left side of your screen right there, and you can see Casby jump off sides. I, I, I'm thinking, Ken, that w there's some uh, reflection in his voice that's uh, pulling them off sides. Right up the middle goes Bruce Jordan swilling. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown from three yards out. Untouched. Nobody was there to contest him. He just walks right in. Great job by the offensive line of Brother Martin. Nobody there from far to stop him. An extra point away again. Sam Walters' toe for Brother Martin can make this a tie ball game with three. 10 to go before halftime. Good look from the end zone camera. Splits the uprights. We are tied at 21. It is an offensive shootout and an explosive display of power football. Pat Jordan Swilling 
13 carries, 89 yards, three touchdowns in the first half, and that's why the Crusader fans are excited. They know they've got <laughs> Bruce Jordan Swilling lighting it up and keeping their Crusaders in this game, along with the Cork Cougars offense, keeping them in this game. I love the Catholic League student sections. These guys come <laughs> out and they just get after it. That's all the schools in the Catholic League. That's awesome. Sam Walters. Short kicks it. McGrath, McMath, rather. And he's got room on the right side. Look at McMath, the wide receiver. Take off. He may go the distance. McMath all the way for the touchdown. Race McMath takes the short kick on the left side and runs around to the right side of the field 70 yards or so for a touchdown. Tell you what, there's the uh, sky kick. He does not call a fair catch, but everybody's bunched up for Brother Martin. Nobody's in their lanes. Where's the backside pursuit right there? Great block. And there goes McGrath with his uh, excellent speed down the boundary. That's 68 athletic yards. Talent. 68 yards right, right. to right. be exact. 68 yards of athletic talent right there. But uh, Brother Martin's nowhere to be found on that backside. I know they're going to have to get that fixed because I know Bonice will not let that take place again. Duran Slat for the point after. And as quickly as the Crusaders tied it, Carr has taken the lead again by a touchdown, 28 to 21, and this is a racetrack. My neck hurts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I'm at the uh, uh, U.S. Open and the tennis ball's going back and forth here. A 68-yard touchdown a kickoff return for a touchdown by Race McMath. Look at this block right there. You saw Trey Swilling was the contain man on Brother Martin's left-hand side, but he gets blocked. Everybody else was all bunched up insides and outside their lanes. Hey. you got to stay as deep as the ball, and you got to stay on leverage as the ball, and there was no leverage right there. Mondays on WHNO Sports. It's Sports Nola TV. Hall of Famer Ricky Jackson, Brian Ellie Walsh, and host Ken Trahan break down the Saints College and Prep action and debate the hot topics of the week. That's Sports Nola TV each Monday at 6, right here on WHNO TV. I bet you Ken Trahan was at that, uh, that Beatles concert back he, in the 60s. He probably broadcast it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. There he is doing a game on radio tonight. So here comes the car kickoff. They're back in the lead by seven, just under three minutes to play in the half, and neither Jordan Swilling nor anyone else can get to that football. Chris Smith, a running back, was back there with Jordan Swilling. They'll let it go, and let's see if Brother Martin now can take these final two minutes and 57 seconds drive the field and tie this one up. We'd have a new ball game for the second half. And boy, wouldn't that be something the way these two offenses have played. Type of game that will give defensive coordinator fits. You can see Mark Bonice firing up his team, making sure the plays are called. The game or the, the two minute drill is, is set. Well, he's, he's, he's a little upset right now because he doesn't like giving up kickoffs for touchdowns. No coach does. Um, you know, especially when you plan all week to kick the ball away and sky kick the ball and make sure. But that guy right there is extremely happy. I'm sure with his special teams, Bryce Brown. He's excited. Yes, he is. He's excited. He doesn't show it, but he's excited. Well, he's showing it. He, I love, Bryce just, everything's calm. Everything's cool. Everything's collective. And his team takes that demeanor. They don't get too fired up. They just go out and do the job. Johnson on the stop, not much that time for Bruce Jordan Swilling. Look at this work right here. He's got to do just to pick up one yard. Wow. Look at the pursuit right there by the white jerseys. I know um, Darnell right there, Ronell right there, Burbank is out there, and he's happy because he, uh, uh, he had missed a tackle earlier in the game in the backfield. But he's out there hustling, and he kind of makes up for it. At the 21-yard line, second down, nine. John Paul Pierce running the show, handing off to Bruce Jordan Swilling. Look at this hole up the middle. Here goes Bruce Jordan Swilling. Look out. Look out. 
It's a foot race, and he's caught from behind. My goodness, by Devin Bush with a touchdown saving tackle. But Bruce Jordan thought he was gone. I'm going to say this. The Devin Bush needs to bottle what he just did because you don't see many people come and catch Bruce Jordan swelling from behind. Here it is. Good look at the inside zone at the, play. At the 70 yard cut. mark. Wow. Great block right there by Daryl Anderson, right in the hole. And then here comes Bush, not giving up on the play. And he pulls down Bruce Jordan swelling from behind. I think he needs to uh, bottle whatever he did right there and kind of sell that because that does not happen too often anywhere in this state. A 70 yard gain, but it was a touchdown saving tackle. First and goal at the nine yard line for the Crusaders. They threaten Bruce Jordan again. He's not winded, not much going in the middle this time, though, as he fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe another half yard. Sheldon Celestine. Sheldon Celestine, right. Steps right up in the hole from his secondary position and brings down uh, Bruce Jordan swelling. Uh, he, he, he's not winded. He can make that run again. We've seen him do that. 16 rushes, 160 yards, three TDs already on the evening. I'm not fast enough and do the math, but I'll tell you what, that's averaging a lot of real estate per carry. Mark Bonice knows his team has to get it in as we go under the one minute mark in the half. Give it to Bruce Jordan. He'll dive. He slipped in the backfield, lost his footing, and just dove forward to try to save something, and he did. Well, his footing wasn't quite right there in the inside zone play. Sidestep, crossover, read the guard box area and look for the opening. And I think he slipped on his sidestep. An official's timeout. One of the Crusaders is down. It's offensive lineman Nicholas Clem, number 74, big 5'9", 236-pound senior. You see it right there, a uh, little footwork problem by swelling, and I think his helmet came down on Clem's leg or knee or thigh or something in that, that hip area to, to injure Clem. They're already banged up on the offensive line, talking about Brother Martin, that is. They, uh, uh, they have one of their offensive linemen uh, out on the year. Um, that's Runnels, Justin Runnels. I don't know if he's going to come back or not, but he was a projected starter on that offensive line. And now Clem's down, so that would be two guys out that they'd have to bring in uh, a couple of backups for. They're looking at his knee, two -lane team ankle area. And Greg Stewart out there, Tulane Sports Medicine, helping out. Uh, this offensive line lost a lot of people. And uh, as a matter of fact, they lost four of the five starters on that offensive line. But all of these guys played last year. Most of these guys had a lot of play in time, and they came back. And this is a senior-laden offensive line. You've got four seniors and one junior. And in these first three games, they have done a fabulous job of clearing out the defense and creating seams or gigantic holes for Bruce Jordan swelling. That's the thing about Bruce Jordan, and Mark Bonice knows this. You don't need a gigantic hole. You just need a little seam. He'll find, he'll weave his way through it. Well, he's got great vision, and that's the uh, trademark of a fine running back. Pad level, great vision. There's uh, Clem getting up, running off. Uh, that's good to see right there. I, I mean, I know what he told that doctor right there. I'm fine. Get me up. <laughs> Leave me alone. I know i got to come out one play because that's the rules, but I want in for the next one. Look at that. He's a warrior. Look at that helmet. It's all marked up and scuffed up. He's all rocked up. He's got his sleeves up tight. He's got a sleeve on his elbow. This guy ain't staying out of the game. Look at him. Uh, no, no touch football where he's playing. I'll tell you what. I, lo I love offensive linemen. i tell you no what. They, touch they, football there, buddy. That's hard-nosed tackle football. They're, Head hitting. These offensive linemen are the heart and soul of any football team. I know any coach will tell you that. As your offensive line plays, usually it's the way your team is going to go. Third down goal at the six. John Paul Pierce with Bruce Jordan Swilling dropped the football and Swilling has to jump on it to save it. And now you're faced with a dilemma. Fourth down, clock ticking. Martin's just, got a timeout. Just slips out of his hands. Yeah. I think Second time it's happened to John Paul Pierce. Right. I think they'll run the clock all the way down, call a timeout, and kick the three. Take the sure thing, right? Well, I, I think they need to. you got to get every opportunity inside the red zone. You're going to have to get your points. And if it means uh, uh, kicking the three, that's three points that I have. I've got to make sure I take it. Remember, 
you get the three here. Brother Martin gets the ball to start the second half. Another point well taken, absolutely. So they call the timeout. They'll bring out their field goal team and take the three. Carr won the opening kick, but they wanted the football. They took the football, drove right down and scored and took the early lead in this one. Now the Crusaders want to put this on the foot of Sam Walters. He has been perfect on all the extra points watching him and Stolberg the other kicker on this brother Martin Crusader team they both have a 25 35 yard pretty accurate range. So this line of scrimmage. At the 18 yard line you're looking at 25 about a 30 yard 35 yard field goal. If they put it down right there at the 25 yard line let's see. Watching Walters before the game this well within his range. It's going to be a 24 yard officially 24 yard field goal. Oh the old ice play. Oh, and this could happen two more times. <laughs> I've never done that. On purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you may have. Oh, look, was that coach calling it to timeout? Well, you know, I, I, I would like somebody to run the statistics and the data on icing a kicker and does it really work or does it does does it not work? It all depends on the psyche of the place kicker. I think it depends on does it make the guy on defense, the head coach, feel better that he did everything he possibly could to try to disrupt that kick. Well, think of this, too. For the last few years, you had Blake Perilou as your kicker. So you've got a brand new young man coming in to assume the kicking duties here. He's been in a battle with Zachary Stolberg for it. A lot of things got to go right in this. Faust has to get the ball down. That's Brady Faust, number six. And you got to have a good snap by your uh, by your uh, your short snapper. Still a 24-yarder. No icing on this one. He gets it up, and it is good. And that is the end of the first half. But maybe it's not. There's a penalty flag on the field. Roughing the kicker. And. They're going to have a choice here. If it is roughing the kicker, will they want to take it on a uh, kickoff, or do they want to uh, move the ball closer and um, go for the touchdown? And you go for the touchdown. I, I think, think you take it on the kickoff, and you get great field position to start the second half. Because remember, the Crusaders get the ball. They're receiving to start the second half. Eddie Alamore. And that's exactly what he did. 28-24. What an exciting first half here at Tad Garmley City Park Stadium, New Orleans. Carr leading Brother Martin. First half ends on a field goal by the Crusaders.
The Edna Carr High School Marching Band celebrating at halftime as their Cougars lead the Brother Martin Crusaders 28 to 24. What an exciting first half this has been. Ken Berthelot, along with Wade Kaiser, our entire WHNO TV crew, Leslie Stan on the field, and it has been the explosive first half that we thought it might be. Wade Kaiser, we expected nothing less. Well, like last year, back and forth, back and forth, 52 points already scored in the first half. It's back and forth, back and forth. My neck hurts. <laughs> I mean, like it's up and down, up and down. That's you know, it. <laughs> they've got to find some answers, and I tell you what, this is a great, exciting show, but if you like defense, this isn't the game. Bruce Jordan Swilling, impossible to stop, and he's one of the reasons that the Crusaders have 24 on the board right now. North and south runner, great speed, great balance, great agility, great pad level. That's what I really like about Bruce Jordan Swilling. But I tell you what, he's running behind a really fine offensive line tonight, and uh, uh, he's rolling. 160 yards in the first half, three touchdowns. What adjustments does Bryce make in the halftime locker room to try to stop him, slow him down? Well, I think first thing they've got to do, they're going to have to do something about controlling the offensive line, defensive line of scrimmage with their up front four guys. That They're not doing that. They've jumped off sides four times tonight, getting drawn off sides and setting up uh, first in fives and uh, third and shorts and things of that nature. So they're going to have to make some changes up front on the defensive line, move people around, do some slanting, something like that, in order to get some penetration to stop him in the backfield. As hard as it's been to stop the Brother Martin Crusaders, it's been just as difficult for the Crusaders to stop this high-powered offense of the Carr Cougars. So if you're Mark Bonice, what do you do? What, what adjustments do you make to stop this Alden Clark and, and his uh, explosive uh, uh, pocket of weapons? He's got weapons. That's yeah. the key. And he spreads them all over the field. I mean, uh, they're going to spread in empty formations. They're going to be in three by one, two by two, and that puts pressure on the Brother Martin defense just simply from the standpoint that if we're a three-man front, I'm going to have to bring linebackers to get some pressure on the quarterback when he throws the football. So what do I have to do? I'm going to have to match up outside with these wide receivers. So when I do match up with those guys outside the wide receivers, I've got the advantage because I'm a lot faster and I can get past you and they can throw the ball deep. The other thing is when there's five in the box for Brother Martin, they're going to run the football. And Santi Marshall is running the ball well tonight, and that offensive line from Carr is doing a good job when they have the numbers inside to run the football. Aren't you glad you're not a defensive coordinator in this <laughs> game for either team, Brother Martin or Carr? It's going to be a fun second half. We'll be back with more of our halftime as we watch the Carr Ben on the field at Tad Garmley. Back with more halftime in a moment.
It's halftime at Tad Gormley Stadium in Edna Carr leads Brother Martin 28 to 24. Les East has a guest on the sideline. Les, take it away with your guest. Thanks, Ken. I'm down here on the sideline with Tommy Mitchell, who's the assistant to the president for alumni and development at Brother Martin High School. Tommy, this we're a couple of weeks into the school year now. Tell us uh, how the semester's gotten off to, has it gotten off to a good start and what's happening around Brother Martin? Sure, Les. Yeah, we've gotten off to a great start at school this year. You know, you know how it is. You were in school. I was in school. Classes take start in mid-August and by after Labor Day, everybody's back into their routine and getting set into a routine and doing things. And, you know, football season at the beginning of the year is always a big thing and creates some excitement and generates some excitement. And uh, so our school's off to a great start this year. In addition to football season, we are now in admission season, as I understand it. A lot of activities going on at all schools to try and introduce the, what the school is all about to prospective students and their parents. Tell us the activities y'all have planned at Brother Martin. Yes, we have several things that to allow prospective students and their families to come see what we're about at Brother Martin. You know, we, we have a couple of information nights scheduled where parents and students can come to school and hear a presentation and ask questions um, on several, starting next Monday, on most Mondays and Fridays, between now and open house, we have school day tours, which is about a three hour period during the day where a student can come and spend the day at school and you know see what an actual school day at Brother Martin's about. And then uh, next Friday night, we have what we call Crusader Discovery Night from 5 to 9 p.m. And students can come, get dropped off, and spend four hours learning how to, what it's like to be a crusader at school. And then finally, it caps off with our open house on uh, Thursday, November 10th from 5 to 9. And so any of these activities, any students interested in coming to find out about school, they can simply just contact our admissions office and our admissions director, Carlos Bogran, and schedule a time to come find out what we have going on. Wow, that's almost a semester-long process of introducing the school to the uh, prospective students. Uh, tell me about the, the day visits a little bit more. That's something I, I'm not familiar with. Is that a relatively new thing to let them get a feel for what it would be like when they, they go to school during the day? Uh, no, actually, we've been doing those for quite a few years now. And the students will get dropped off. They'll have a presentation in the mall from our principal and uh, Greg Rando and our admissions director and some students. And then they'll just get to tour around school and see some of the classes going on and what's happening at school and things like that. And it gives them a real good feel for what it would be like to be at Brother Martin. So we think it's a great way for students to come and find out if we're the right fit for them. Now, y'all obviously have a lot planned here in the short term, but you always have to be looking long term. What's the future hold at Brother Martin? Yeah, you know, you're always looking long term to uh, improve your facilities and and your entire school and we're in the process now of uh, looking at phase three of our master plan and some of the things being talked about uh, are a new library, a renovation to our, our kitchen and our student mall area in Commons and some uh, renovations to Conlin Gym and some athletic upgrades and things. So we're in the process of working on that now and seeing what we can put together because you know you, you, we always want to try to be the best we can possibly be and provide the best for our students in facilities, academics, every area you, you, you could think of. So that's kind of what we're looking for to the, in the near future here. So, Okay, thank you, Tommy. That's Tommy Mitchell with Brother Martin High School. And now we're going to take another break and be back with more of our halftime of the Brother Martin and Carr football game.
Back at halftime, Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, and uh, the Car Cougars leading Brother Martin 28-24. And Wade, there were so many highlights in this first half. Let's get right to the highlights because that's what our fans really want to see. Loaded with them. There's your first Car. touch. Yeah, they took the opening kickoff, and here goes your first score right here. 28 yards by Santee Marshall. Santee Marshall takes it off the left-hand side on a great sweep and gets into the end zone. Look at that run right there, but you know who that is. Bruce Jordan swelling as the Crusaders answer on their net is suing drive 7-7. There you go. Speed option right there. Pitch the ball out there to Mr. Marshall again. He gets into the end zone. Six yards makes it 14-7. And here comes Bruce Jordan swelling again for his second of three. Ties it at 14. I love the blocking by the receiver out there. Anthony Spurlock on that 11-yard catch. Car goes up 21-14, but Jordan Swilling ties it at 21 on a little three-yard run. And watch the ensuing kickoff race, McMath. Tell you what. 68 yards. <laughs> That's the one uh, I, I bet you in, in the locker room that uh, the Brother Martin coaches are really getting on their team about. But here comes Jordan Swilling. Looks like he's going to go the distance. Time is running out in the first half, and he's caught from behind, you stopping him at 70 yards on the run. You don't see that happen too often, but great effort by that car defender right there, pulling him down from behind. And that led to a 24-yard field goal by Sam Walters, and that's where we're at, 28-24, as we take a look at the stats in the first half. Wow. Uh, look at the rushing stats <laughs> right there, and uh, the passing yardage. Uh, you know, by car, that's the thing that jumps out. Look how kind of balanced they are right there. For 240 total yards, they only have one turnover. One turnover in this game, none by the Crusaders, and that's one of the reasons they are with they are 2-0 and oh to start the season, as both of these teams are. We will take a break. We'll be back with the start of our second half right after this. It's Tad Gormley Stadium in City Park. Everybody having fun. Lighting up the night sky like these two offenses have been lighting up the scoreboard. We're almost set for the second half. Let's first go downstairs to Les East on the field. 
thanks, Ken. As you might expect, car coach Bryce Brown is very happy with the way his offense has played, except for some penalties. He says that's something he'd like to clean up in the second half. As for Brother Martin coach Mark Bonice, he was lamenting the kickoff return they gave up that really made the difference in the first half. He said he really likes the way his team is competing and growing up in a very physical ball game, and he likes where they're at because they get the ball here to start the second half. Back to you, Ken. Thanks, Les. Wade Kaiser, that's exactly what you said when we showed the shot of the huddle. You said Mark Bonice is so upset because they gave up that kickoff return for a touchdown. And uh, it's not going to hurt that much. I say that because the roughing the kicker penalty on the Brother Martin field goal on the last play of the first half is going to be accepted here for the start of the second half. So the Crusaders are going to have excellent field position because Carr will have to kick off from their own 25-yard line. I mean, this is the thing. You're, you're, you're fighting your, your, uh, yourself off offensively and defensively to keep pace with such a good team as in Carr. You can't give up things on kickoffs. You just can't do that. He knows that, and that's why he was so frustrated. Been there, done that. Oh, yes, and, and you nailed that one. I mean, just nailed it. I mean, I could see it in his face. I know exactly how he feels. Akili Durenslat will tee it up, and if he ever needed to get some leg into a kick, this would be the time because you've got to back up this powerful offense of the Crusaders. Carr leading it, though, 28-24 as we start the second half. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Les East, the entire WHNO TV crew. Pictures have been so fabulous in this game. Here we go. This one's coming down to Chris Smith. And Smith will return past the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Great field position, as we thought, for the Crusaders to start this second half. Well, you know, right there at the, uh, you know, the 46-yard line, that is a great spot for them to take the ball over, and they're going to have to get back on schedule now. Uh, you're going to see a huge dose, I'm sure, of uh, number Mr. nine. Swelling, number nine. <laughs> and there he is. He had first-half numbers that. Uh, again, are out of this world. 17 rushes, 163 yards, three touchdowns. A Georgia Tech commit, and he could be one of the young men that plays two ways when he gets there. Here's your first offensive play of the second half. Carr showing some blitz, trying to stuff the line. Jordan Swilling finds a little bit of room on the right side before Carr can bring him down. Host the players there. Tackles led by Austin Kent. Right there, I saw an adjustment that Carr made in the second half, or at halftime, should I say, for the second half, is they brought extra defenders into the box. They, they're they're going to elect to play man-on-man -man coverage out there with one free safety deep and try to get uh, eight uh, or nine people in the box. That's their commitment that they're going to make to stop number nine. Got a good shot of number 10 just a moment ago. Darnell Bridges for a car. He's usually around the football. Helped on that last tackle and helps on this one. Is, again, they're trying to stuff Jordan Smilling as Brother Martin is trying to establish him here early in this second half. Well, what Martin's Third gonna, down eight. Right. What Martin's going to have to do now is they're going to have to see how they're putting eight and nine in the box of those gold helmets, and they're going to have to be able to throw the ball a little bit out on the flank and loosen them up by formation to try to get some of those guys outside of the box. It's tough to run against nine people. There's a couple of people there that just aren't blocked. At their own 49-yard line, here's your third down eight play, and John Paul Pierce with a man wide open over the middle, and that's caught by the tight end Joseph Parente to move the chains for a first down before finally being stopped by Quindell Johnson, a gain of 18. Great call by Mike LeBlanc. He recognizes eight and nine in the box by the Carr Cougars. What does he do? Realizes that they are in man coverage. They run the uh, little zone pass, quick hit to number 31, uh, Parente, for a nice game. On first down, they'll try to open it up again with Jordan Swilling, but again, the Cougars stack the box and stop him for no gain. Well, I'll tell you what, they have committed to stopping Swilling by putting more people in the box. I've said it uh, for the past couple of uh, reps that they've run right there, and a great shot by number 98, Damon Harris, who was big coming up on that tackle right there on Swilling. Big Damon Harris. And Six help foot from set on buys. You'll always have help. 
try to bring down Swilling because he's so hard to bring down one on one. See a good look right there. You know, they've got eight people stacked up inside in the box. So what are you going to have to do? Somehow you're going to have to loosen that up by formation or by throwing the ball or a combination of both. John Paul Pierce has done that very well after the fake to Jordan Swilling. He will throw to the outside and that is caught by Brady Faust. His first catch tonight run out of bounds after picking up the first down by Quindell Johnson. That will move the chains again for the Crusaders. He's an outstanding athlete. He plays baseball too for the Crusaders. But the thing I'm going to have to talk to him about is he comes over to the sideline, catch the ball and get vertical. You're not going to put a move on anybody, buddy. Catch it and get vertical and let's get those yards. Yeah, well, you got 19, and you're right. If he gets vertical, maybe more than 19. Huh? Please stop all of that and just get vertical, all right? I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. 15 yard line, first down and 10. They go to the big man again. Bruce Jordan swilling over the right side, and he'll push down for a few more. This is just a good, long, sustained drive by the Crusaders, and I'm impressed that their offense is taking what the core defense is giving them on this drive. Or they have to. They, they, like I said, they've got to be able to play the numbers game, and they're going to have to out formation, try to pull people out of the box to get swilling a little bit more room, as well as throw the ball out on the perimeter some. Here's a give to Jordan Swelling again over the left side. He is near the six yard line. He's just hammering it up in there on the inside zone. They still have eight in the box. One less guy than they can block and he's taking them on and, and he uh, great look from the end zone right here. He's taking them on great block. Gets into the crease, runs uh, the first defender over, and picks up some extra yards. Crusaders can make a first down. It's third down and one. John Paul Pierce, good look at him as a junior, replacing three-year starter Jake Brophy at quarterback. Give to Bruce Jordan Swilling when you just need one. Who can stop him? He'll move the chains. First and goal for the Crusaders. That's the counter play they've been running for years. Mark Bonice, uh, when he was the offensive coordinator well, wait a, years ago. Take that back. I thought he had made the first easy, and he is just – well, I'm surprised they're not measuring this. It's so close. From my angle and our angle here in the press box, it looked like he made it. Another look. Let's see. There's another look in the counter play that I was talking about right there. He gets up in there. Maybe his knee goes down a little early from where they spot that's, the ball. That's what it is. So now you've got fourth and one. No field goal here. Give to Bruce Jordan swilling right up the middle, and now he's not only got the first down, he goes all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Bruce Jordan swilling with his fourth touchdown tonight. And Inside, Brother Martin's back in the lead. Inside zone play, but what happens up front is that offensive line gets movement on that big defensive line. And those big defensive linemen of Carr and gives him a crease to be able to get into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the evening. Sam Walters had to attempt the point after. And a three-point Brother Martin lead if he drills it. And he does. So we'll take a break. Brother Martin takes the second half kickoff, puts in a long sustained drive, and Bruce Jordan Swilling caps it with a touchdown. The Crusaders happy that that man right there, BJS, just took it six yards into the end zone. 
capping off the end of the first drive of the second half of this football game and the Crusaders are back in the lead by a field goal 31 to 28 by three. He's catching what? his breath right there literally. <laughs> Four touchdowns, probably approaching 200 yards on the night. We've just started the second half. Kickoff will be short, go out of bounds. And now we'll just wait to see whether we're placing or kicking over. My referee is Eddie Alamore. My bet is Carr's taking the ball on the 35-yard line. Right you are. When you've got an explosive offense, Bryce Brown knows let's just get, well, wait a minute. And there's Bruce Jordan swilling, 24 rushes, closing in on that 200-yard mark, just 19 yards short of it at 181, his fourth touchdown of the night. And he just runs with authority. Georgia Tech commit and uh, with written Brown. Bryce Brown knows stopping him is the key to winning this football game tonight. And he knows, too, that he's got an offense that can score for a score with Brother Martin. Here's the toss to the right side to Warren Newman, also the kickoff returner. Brought down by Benjamin Chaplin. Second time we've seen the bubble screen tonight. Uh, you, you, you've got uh, Newman getting out from his three by one position. He's a number three receiver inside. Bubbles back, catches the screen in front of the two wide receivers and gets vertical to try to get as much room as he can to run. Now you've got your three receivers stacked down at the bottom of the screen. Second down six at the 39 yard line. Alden Clark, your quarterback with the fake and he's going to go to the top side of your screen where he had man coverage throws complete to race McMath who races into the end zone for the score. He went to the high side where he had single coverage and it's another 61 yard touchdown for race McMath off the throw of quarterback Alden Clark. Race McMath didn't do anything that special runs his route nice thrown ball by Alden Clark. Uh, Lost connection by the defensive back. Nowhere to be found right there. Uh, Race McMath works his stem to the outside and the ball's put right on the money. Uh, great throw, great catch by McGrath and Clark. Well, it took Brother Martin almost five minutes to score after the second half kickoff and it took uh, Edna Carr's explosive offense just 46 seconds to answer with that 61 yard touchdown throw to race McMath. Here's a good look at it. Look at the nice throw right here. Where's the secondary? Where Where is the corner right there? Somehow they had to have a blown coverage back there. Uh, Ryan Alfonso was nowhere to be seen as far as making sure that he was on his, uh, his receiver. And uh, I'm sure that's something they're going to get straight. Lance Lattay is going to get straight on the boundary when they come over. Two plays, 65 yards, 46 seconds, and the Cougars are back in the lead, 35-31. Tell you what, what did you say? 40 seconds? Is that what you said? 46 seconds. I also 40, said before the game, and we didn't seconds. say this on the air, we might approach 100 points tonight. <laughs> we, we may. 46 seconds. Wow. We're not halfway through the third quarter yet. 6.45 to play third quarter, and each team has had the ball one time and scored on their possession. Bruce Jordan swilling to the near side deep. And uh, the Cougars have been kicking away from him. Chris Smith, their little running back, is to the your top of your screen back at the 10-yard line if the Cougars kick deep. Let's see what Duran Slap, the kicker, will do. And he will send it deep. He'll send it to Chris Smith. Jordan Swilling will block for him. Smith with a little bit of a seam is hit, spun around, and goes down, but does give the Crusaders some good field position. We are at Tad Gormley Stadium. Kim Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Les East down on the field. Our entire WHO TV crew, 639 to play here in the third quarter. An exciting, explosive football game between two offenses that can't be stopped. The Brother Martin Crusaders and the Edna Carr Cougars, who now lead 35-31 and have just kicked back off to the 
Crusaders of Brother Martin, and they've got that big gun backfield behind quarterback John Paul Pierce. He wears number nine. It's Bruce Jordan Swilling. They also have Singleton, Jeremy Singleton, back from injury, and he'll break one, two, and not the third tackle. Quendell Johnson wrapped him up. Nice wide receiver screen out there to Singleton. Nice blocking on the edge by Eric Lasser. I talked in the pregame show about uh, how good Lasser is, not just catching the ball with his hands, but also with his blocking. He did a nice job right there. You got Singleton getting up with his limp on his knee right there. I hope everything's going to be okay. Well, Singleton had injured the knee earlier this year, was, as you say, cleared to play on Wednesday. So we'll take a break. They're going to take a hydration break right now. We'll take one with them and talk about Jeremy Singleton when we come back. 6.07 to play third quarter, 35-31 here at Tad Gormley. Trailing Edna Carr by four, 35-31, and Wade Kaiser, Ken Berthelot, Les East down on the field. That's Jeremy Singleton, who, as we had stated earlier, had a knee injury, was cleared to play on Wednesday, but this is a cramp. He is just cramped up, and they're trying to stretch it. That's good news because we don't want to see any player get re-injured in a high school game. Well, that's part of the reason the Federation has these hydration uh, rules put into place all through the month of September and October. They'll stop them, but at six minutes in the quarter, they'll always have one. John Paul Pierce on the keeper, and he's up to the 41-yard line. He's a perfect two of two for 37 yards here in the second half. Tyler Casby made the tackle, and again, John Paul Pierce, I'm really impressed with. He's had to take over this offense, had a shaky jamboree. The coaches settled it down, said, don't force things, take your time, run the offense, don't make mistakes, and he has it. Still no interceptions in this season in, in two and a half games. He brings another dimension to their offense. He can run the ball. There's a there's a tackle on the backfield, one of the few on the night. Austin Kent says, hello, Bruce Jordan Swilling. You're going down, the big 5'11 sophomore. I'll tell you what, that's one of the few on the night. Here's a good look at it. They're running the inside zone play. Uh, we got a whiff on the right side by the brother Martin <laughs> offensive lineman, Jack Zachary, bro. Just really missed on Austin Kent, who comes through there. He slants in there, gets penetration, and uh, like I said, one of the few bring downs in the backfield of Bruce George Swilling on the night. Newman is deep for this punt on fourth down. It'll be short. He'll let it bounce in front of him, and the Crusaders down it at the 30-yard line. So once again, the Car Cougars have pretty good field position. Hey, as explosive as these two offenses are, I'm not going to say that anymore because they can start at the 10-yard line and have good field position. Well, I wouldn't put any money on them that being able to score under 50 seconds again. That's how fast these guys move. Well, we had a flag back upfield. At about the, the officials are huddled around the 40 yard line. And then that's, well, let's just wait for Eddie Alamore. Here he is, our referee. All right, there was a illegal ship. Nobody was set on the uh, the line of scrimmage for Brother Martin. So what's going to take place is cars elected to back him up uh, 
five yards and kick the ball again. They, the, the Cougars would like to get the ball in the hands of their punt returner, Warren Newman. Only the second penalty tonight on the Crusaders. Way too early in the game to talk about big defensive stances, but since the Crusader offense did not answer the car score with a score of their own, in a game like this, can you afford oh. to let your opponent get up two scores on you? Well, in a game like this, any stop defensively is, uh, is a big stop. You know, whether it's in the middle of the third quarter like it is now or right at the end of the game. Patrick Willis races on the field to make sure that the Crusaders have 11 men on the field. Newman comes way up, calls for the fair catch, and makes it at the 43-yard line. So now you can say that the Cougars have excellent field position. Four minutes and 20 seconds to play. Third quarter action. And a little bit of pressure on this Crusader defense to make sure that this high-powered Bryce Brown spread option potent offense doesn't put another one on the board Alden Clark barking the signals he'll give to Santi Marshall who got a good rest we haven't seen him run the football in a while and he'll test the middle for a few yards right into the arms of Dylan Walker Alden Clark has just been unbelievable tonight lead, leading this car offense. I tell you, he's made great decisions. He's getting a call in from the sideline. He's making good reads on the zone read plays that he has. Well, he's having a fine night. You can see his numbers right there, 198 yards, two TDs. The only mistake was the interception. It really didn't hurt him. Hits Dewan Dixon. Look at Dixon with an inside move and another before being chased down from behind. Gets the first down and big-time yardage. Tackle made by Jabari Watts. Tell you why. <laughs> Tell you right there, you, you got to tackle. The, he makes the first guy miss. He's on his way for 27 yards here. Watch him. Right One there. One miss, two misses. Ryan Alfonso Three. needs to make that play. Doesn't make the play. Makes the first guy miss. Picks up good yardage. There's your option. Pitch left side. Marshall with it. And he's run out of bounds by Trey Swilling. And look out because this high-powered, fast-paced offense is getting a little bit of its own right now. They're, they're up. They've got the momentum. Speed option right there. You can see coming right into your picture. Uh, you can see Sante Marshall after he gets the pitch. Good look at Sante Marshall there. Fake to Sante Marshall this time. Going to McMath on the right side with a tackle break and another into the end zone. Touchdown! Race McMath. They go left side first. They go right side to McMath. He takes it into the end zone for a 16-yard touchdown. This is an athletic team. I tell you what, it, it, as fast as these guys move, playing with the numbers game uh, on Brother Martin, getting the ball out on the flank and the perimeter, I tell you what, these guys can really motor their offense. Great block right there by Warren Newman when we see it on the replay. It is the race McMath second half. He has scored both touchdowns, a 61-yarder, a 16-yarder, and he has the kickoff return for 68 yards. Three scores for him. It's 42-31. Carr with the lead and uh, Tad Garmley is just being every fan sitting in the seats at Tad Garmley is being treated to a spectacular offensive show here's here's your uh, replay look at this block right there tell you what uh, 26 just stays on the block he doesn't hold the receiver and allows McGrath McMath excuse me to get to the outside great look at it right here boom now you know, I'm the defensive coordinator from Brother Martin last today. I'm probably screaming I'm getting held out there on the edge. But I tell you what, I just thought that was an excellent block by Warren Newman. I'd love to see wide receivers block. I said that earlier in the game. Lance, Lance Leday right now has got to make sure he gets uh, something going defensively. Catch the Prep Recruiting Insider Wednesday on WHNO. Our series focusing on the world of high school recruiting features Rick Gailey and Renee Nado as they take an in-depth look at the best prospects in our area, past and present. It's Prep Recruiting Insider 
PRI each Wednesday at 6 here on WHNO TV 20. And this week, their guest is Archbishop Shaw. Going to be a fun show Wednesday at 6. Anytime you get Scott Bain's father on television, it's a fun show. Yes. <laughs> no said. He, he's a kick. <laughs> yes, he is. Outstanding football coach. 42-31, the lead to the Cougars as they kick off and send this one deep in the end zone over the head of Chris Smith, the running back and the kick returner. Nice leg again by Achille Durenslat, the kicker for Edna Carr. Well, right now on the boundary of Brother Martin, Lance Lede is, is uh, he's, he's trying to pound some things home. Number one, tackling getting off of blocks and just playing a little bit harder because they're, they're having a hard time matching up with this athletic speed of car and, and he's trying to drive that home to his kids because he says look the next effort is the most important effort we get one stop we're right back in this thing because our offense can score at any time so at the 20 yard line first down 10 the fake to Bruce Jordan swilling and there's the toss to Eric Lasser. And he's got room trying to make a spin move before being gang tackled to the ground. But look at Eric Lasser running back who has had a little bit of an ankle problem trying to come off of that. They've used him. The Crusaders have more as a running back out of the backfield. They've been putting the ball in his hands in space, and he responds with a 48-yard gain. Great throw by Pierce right there. Puts it right on the money. As I said, Carr's answer at halftime was to put eight people in the box, maybe even nine, and try to maybe run some man coverage out on the edge with one free safety deep, and uh, nobody around the receiver that time. Great at call. the 32-yard line, first and 10. Again, the fake to Swilling. John Paul Pierce keeps it for a few on the left side. He pulls the ball and hammers it up inside. Not much place to go, but what he's doing is he's keeping those car defenders honest. And as you said earlier, he brings a nice dimension yes, he does. to the quarterback slot that Jake Brogy right. could run the last three Correct. years, but he didn't have the running ability that John Paul Pierce has. What he gives Coach LeBlanc, it gives him some flexibility here. And, and that's good. You need that in your offense. He's a weapon. Speaking about John Paul Pierce, that is. Second down, 10. This time, Bruce Jordan Swilling will test the middle, and he just pushes a rugby scrum down inside the 30-yard line to the 29. Gang tackle there. Well, Swilling's so strong. He takes a pile, and he just moves it. Plus, he can run away from you. He has all the attributes of an outstanding running back. He's just an outstanding athlete. Third down, seven. Got to feel this would probably be four down territory, and it might make third down a lot easier on the Crusaders. Flag down. I think we are going to have somebody jumping off sides. Fifth on. time tonight. Fifth time tonight. Fifth time tonight. That I'm time they got Austin Kent. They've all they, 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 they've all taken their chair of doing this. Yes. You know, I mean, all of them. And it, it's got to be something with the reflection and the voice of John Paul Pierce to be able to, when they get third, short, second, and short. And look, Austin Kent knows sides. it. He, he knows it. He's heard right. the cadence. But you're right. He's frustrated with himself. But he knows that John, and it's, every time it's happened, it's when, John Paul Pierce has been behind center because a few times Jeremy Singleton has been behind center in the Wildcat. But when John Paul Pierce is, is back there, two seconds, one second, they can't get it off in time. Did they get the timeout? Yes, they did. Yes, they got the timeout. So there's the first timeout called of the second half with 1.16 to play in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout with them. Mark Bonice talks to the team as the fans enjoy an explosive show. Car with the lead.
Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, Les East out on the field. And, uh, I, 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 wow. Ken, I, I hope there? that timeout doesn't come back to hurt Brother Martin somewhere. you got to have your call in as you're coming out of uh, a penalty. And um, good look right there at Singleton. Hope he's okay. But uh, I hope that timeout doesn't come back to bite Brother Martin somewhere in uh, the fourth quarter. Third down, two. Bruce Jordan swilling, usually automatic on short yardage, and he is this time again going straight ahead, pushing a bunch of Car Cougar defenders with him. First down, Brother Martin. They move the chains as we near the one minute mark of the third quarter. I mean, how many times I got to say this? How strong is this guy? You know, I know he loves the weight room and he works hard, and uh, he's got great, great, great effort off the field as far as maintaining his athletic ability, but that just showed it right there. Rene Nado's prep recruiting inside of Guru and WHNO TV 20 and SportsNOTA.com. He is his number one running back and number two overall player in South Louisiana, or this Southeast Louisiana area. And you can understand why. Great cut right there on the inside zone. He gets up into the hole, and that's what you teach running backs to do. You want to press the hole. Press the hole on the inside zone. Press it, see it with your eyes, jump cut to clear, and that's exactly what Bruce Jordan Swilling did right there. Terrence Casey Charles made the stop, second down two. They're at the 12-yard line of the Cougars, who lead by 11. Got a little breathing room, but not when Bruce Jordan Swilling's got the football as he pushes down inside the five-yard line. Offensive line control the offensive line of scrimmage right there. They're trying to get an extra play in before the quarter runs out. 12 seconds left, or 11 seconds left in this quarter. Clock is running. Here goes that play they were trying to get in. Bruce Jordan swilling. He's pushing the rugby scrum and goes down finally. They just wouldn't go down. He, he's that hard to bring down as the third quarter clock runs down. So with that, we will take a break. After three quarters of play, the Car Cougars are happy because their team is up by 11 as Bruce Jordan shows what he can do with the football, too. It's been an explosive show, but the Cougars have the lead. Leaders are trying to inspire their fans and their team. They trail Edna Carr by 11 here at Tad Gormley City Park Stadium, New Orleans. We start the fourth quarter of play. Ken Berthelot, Wade Kaiser, our entire WHNO TV crew, Bruce Jordan Swilling. You bet they're going to count on him to make something happen right here. But quarterback John Paul Pierce, while we were away during that break, had come to the sidelines. He had cramped up. They rubbed it out quick. He's back behind center. Gives to Bruce Jordan, swelling, and he just powers his way near the goal line. Is he in? Touchdown. Bruce Jordan, swelling, just powers his way in for his fifth touchdown of the night. Wow. From two yards out. Well, look for a two-point uh, play here. I think this is where you're going to have to go for two right here with the magic number being five. Card says go for two. I think they will. Where'd you get that card? I've always tried to find that card that the coaches have. I, I can hook you up with one of those. <laughs> 
black market deal? Nah. <laughs> Here's your two-point try. Look at Bruce Jordan swilling with a little razzle-dazzle, the handoff to him, and he throws it to the tight end, Joseph Parenti, for the two-point play. Wow, do I like that. That's awesome. How's that is a great that play. That's a chicanery. Wow. That's like the little jump pass that you used to see out of Tebow, things of that nature. Awesome play right there. Here it is. Handoff, and here comes the jump pass. This is not even a jump pass. It's a lob pass. Nobody on Parente, touchdown, or excuse me, two-point conversion. And uh, that makes it a three-point game. So that card was right. You pull within a field goal. Carr, 42, Brother Martin, 39. And, yes, we're still in regulation. <laughs> this is not overtime when you see this kind of score. But that young man right there, five touchdowns tonight. And a two-point conversion for a pass. Good look at the touchdown right here. Outside stretch. Power. Just powers it in. Ball breaks that uh, plane of the goal line in for his fifth touchdown. Goodness gracious. We score him. Well, we saw him rather score seven last year against St. Stanislaus, and that was the first half. They pulled him out. Oh, Georgia Tech's got to be excited. He and brother Trey Swilling. Both committed to Georgia Tech because dad played there. He was an All-American, Pat Swilling All-American, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. It's a commitment, but he hasn't signed yet. You got a feeling that some people are going to try to recruit him away. Oh, I'm sure that's going to take place. They're going to try. It'll be rain to main to be seen if it happens. Kicked out of bounds away from Newman. So we'll see now whether Mark Bonis would like up would like to have them kick it again. Bryce Brown, rather. Wow, man. Bryce Brown knows that he is in a horse race here. We had earlier talked about this being the two heavyweight slugfest, but this is now becoming more like a horse race. I'm going to score, you're going to score, I'm going to score, you're going to score. Right now, Bryce Brown and his Cougars have scored one more time. They have the lead. And the Carr Cougars in the second half have only run six plays but gained 122 yards and still have the lead on it. And two TDs, two TDs out of it. First down, fumble. It's on the ground and the Crusaders. The Crusaders, John Booker with the receptions, got it. Whoa. Tell you what, that's big right there. They, uh, they, second turnover of the night, I believe, for Carr right there. And, and not in an opportune time, obviously. Here it is right here. Pressure into the backfield. Got number seven, Simone Anderson, making a play in the backfield, stripping the ball out with a great job of John Booker jumping on that ball. There it is, Brother Martin football. How big is that turnover in a crucial situation? Fourth quarter, you're down by three. Let's go down to Les East for more on this. When they, Brother Martin came to the sideline after that last card touchdown, number 42, the junior safety, Benjamin Chaplin, stood up in the huddle, and before any of the coaches could talk, he was very animated in trying to light a fire under his teammates, trying to get them to make a big play. And the first play that they're back on the field, of course, they made a big play. Back to you, Ken. Leadership. That's called leadership. Sometimes you just got to motivate your own team. Bruce Jordan Swilling carries on that first play, but Loses a yard, second down, 11, ball in the 34. John Paul Pierce quarterbacking this offense at the car 34. Great opportunity for Brother Morton, trailing by three. Good fake. He's going to go long. Has a man down there, but under throws him. Not a really good pass right there. Needed to Intended put for Eric Lasser. Right. Me. Needed to put a little bit more air in the ball to Lasser right there. Had Lasser had a step on the defender. Just the ball was underthrown. 
Seems at times that John Paul Pierce, who has dropped the ball twice, had a little trouble on a couple of throws. Maybe the heat and humidity down there is just sweat, perspiration, maybe slippery hands, slippery ball. I'm not sure, but he did cramp up early. Remember, we told you that he cramped and he could be having trouble with that too. Maybe couldn't get as, as much on that ball as he wanted. Third down, 11 at the 34. Got to move the chains first. Good toss inside. Caught. Lasserre. Lasserre breaks a tackle and goes for a few more. Lasserre with a nice move, and he'll move the chains for Brother Martin. Man, Tyrone is. Gould had him, but missed a tackle on it. Right. Hits Lasserre right in stride on the little slant inside. He was the number two receiver out there, and a two receiver set to the uh, strong side, right side of uh, Brother Martin offense. Great throw and catch. 17-yard gain to move the chains and keep this drive alive for the Brother Martin Crusaders. First down and 10 at the 15-yard line of the Carr Cougars. John Paul Pierce with a good second half. You saw the numbers. And this is Bruce Jordan Swilling carrying straight ahead, brought down by Ronell Burbank. Swilling just pounds it inside again. Here's your zone. Look, good cut. Look at him get his shoulder pads north and south. Oh, Gain of five. That's very nice. Gain of five makes it second down and five from the 10-yard line. Crusaders taking their time, making sure they've got everything in check. John Paul Pierce, he'll give the Bruce Jordan Swilling stacked up at the line. Nowhere this time. Cougars were waiting for him, and again, they're stacking that box, as you talked about earlier, more in the second half to try to stop Bruce Jordan Swilling. Well, as I said, that was the big uh, change in the game plan of Carr coming out in the second half was to get eight and nine people in the box and play man coverage out on those wide receivers. Another so third down now for the Crusaders. Third down five. They're at the 10-yard line of Carr. Carr was inching up. Maybe showing. What's the chance that the Crusaders might use their little trick play with Bruce Jordan swelling again here? Nope, he won't. He'll carry, and he does not get down to the five-yard line, so he is short of the first down, and that brings up a decision. Fourth down and about three at the eight-yard line. They check with me on the sideline to check the numbers from upstairs in the box with Mike LeBlanc. They decide to stay with the outside run zone game. The numbers weren't with them right there. Still had man coverage out on the outside on the uh, number one and the number two receiver at, that were down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, they're going to talk it over. I believe Brother Martin just took their second time out. Well, let's stay here and talk about this because with 9.02 to play in this game, Brother Martin with the field goal could tie it up at 42. You go for it here and you don't get the first down or the touchdown. You've turned or given the momentum back to Edna Carr. Well, you're asking me what I would do, right? What would you do? <laughs> I'd kick the three right here. I'd make sure I get my points. I'd have to get the points. That's what I would do too, but I do not see Sam Walters going into the game. The offense stays in there on fourth down and three at the eight-yard line. Folks, they've got to get to the five to have four more shots at it or to the end zone to take the lead. John Paul Pierce. There's your check with me right there. They're counting the numbers in the box. See the man coverage out on the number one and two receivers at the top of the screen. Let's see if he goes that way. He's going to check again. And the clock ran down. The play clock ran down. Did they call timeout in time? You can see John Paul Pierce limping a little bit. That's the cramps. He's been cramping up and having trouble there tonight with this heat and humidity. We'll take a break with the Crusaders and the Cougars. Back right after this to see if Brother Martin picks up the first down.
All right, what happened on that last play was John Paul Pierce, Brother Martin quarterback, dropped his mouthpiece. So when he stooped down to pick it up, it took a little extra time, and they got a delay of game penalty. So they call timeout to talk about it. Now, with it no longer being fourth and three, rather fourth and eight, they bring Sam Walters in, the field goal kicker off the bench, to attempt a 29-yard field goal from the left hash mark. And he kicks it. It is no good. He hooked it left. So he missed a 29-yard field goal. And with 8 minutes and 28 seconds to play in this game, Carr is hanging on to a three-point lead over the Crusaders of Brother Martin. I think the plan was they were trying to draw him off sides at first yes. right there and then possibly call the timeout, get your field goal team on the field to kick uh, the field goal. But uh, like you said, mouthpiece gets dropped on the ground, clock ticks down, they take a delay of game penalty, and it sets up a father field goal for uh, Walters. Had the distance, just hooked it to the left. So the Cougars take over at their own 20-yard line. First and 10, Alden Clark and company there. The Crusader defense has to come up with a big stop. Edna Carr has only run a few plays in this second half, but they've scored both times. Yeah, 46 seconds and what? This is their eighth play from scrimmage in the second half. Right. 14 points and so yeah, 14 just under points a minute? And yeah, probably just under two for sure. Nowhere at the 20-yard line on first down. Nowhere to go for Santee Marshall. So it's second down, 10. Matthew Clapp on that big hit right there. Does a great job getting off of the block and stacking things up inside. Brother William Clapp, of course, starts on the offensive line for the LSU Tigers. Dad played there earlier in his career. There's a good fake throw out to Dixon. Dixon has it. Dixon fighting for a first down will be short. Tackled by a few of the Crusaders, including Samad Anderson and others. So Good. now it's third down and four. Great pursuit right here by Brother Martin. They bottle him up right there and a good combination tackle out on the edge. A big third down and four or the Cougars are going to have to turn that ball right back over to the Crusaders. A lot of weapons to go to. Empty backfield for Alden Clark at quarterback against a three-man rush. He's got some time. He's going to throw long, has a man there. Dixon with the catch. Dixon inside the 30, inside the 20, and pushed. Did he make it? A try for a push out of bounds. Fails, and Dixon is in the end zone. Touchdown. What a scoring strike on third down. 74 yards for the score. Alden Clark to Dewan Dixon. And how did he stay in bounds at the very end of that run? How did he get that wide open? <laughs> that's that's my question right there. All right, great effort. No doubt about that. Dewan Dixon catches the ball, goes 78 yards, I believe you said. 74. 74 yards right there. Great effort to get into the end zone. Somehow, you didn't see a red jersey around him. Got to get some coverage on him right there. Well, number 49 trying to score point number 49. And... Durant's lot does just. Here's a good look that. at it again. He pulls the ball down on the pump. Whoever is supposed to be on the hip of the receiver right there is not there. That had to be a bust in the secondary. Look at the great effort he does to get in the end zone. He sticks the ball out, gets it past the pylon, and breaks the uh, plane to score. Saturday on SportsNola.com, it's Nichols football presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional as the Colonels open Southland Conference play against Incarnate Word University. Wade and I will have the call. It's the Colonels and the Cardinals live Saturday at 3 on SportsNola.com. A lot of interest in those Colonels after going up there and throwing a major scare into the University of Georgia, losing by only 2 26 24. Two years ago, Timmy Rebol takes over the job at Nickel State University. I've known T Timmy Rebol for over uh, 30 years. I tell you what, he is an outstanding football coach and the right person to get things turned around down in Thibodeau, and he's definitely got that on the way.
Duran Slat to kick it. And they'll kick it in the direction of Chris Smith, who lets it roll into the end zone for a touchback. And it'll come out to the 20. And once again, Carr gives themselves breathing room. As we near the seven-minute mark in this game, they have a 10-point lead. Well, here's now, somewhere I was right. expecting that trick play down at the other end with Bruce Jordan. Well, I, I don't know if we're going to see that again tonight. Maybe we will. <laughs> maybe we won't. But it I, but, so well. But here's the thing. You know, Car Carr knows they're not out of this because Brother Martin can score at any time, uh, of course, with swelling. And then Brother Martin knows that they're not out of this because they know they can score at any time. So both of them are, have to guard against, you know, letdowns, uh, uh, things of that nature at this stage of the game. It's only a 10-point ball game with 7.08 left to go. Now, Jeremy Singleton, he wears number three up at the top of your screen, had cramped up earlier. They finally worked the cramps out. Took him a while to do so, but he's okay. First down, 10 at the 20. Good play fake. And now the toss almost picked off by Chance Carroll. Tell you what, John Paul Pierce goes to the wrong receiver right there. He had Jeremy Singleton on the 12 to 14 yard curl route standing wide open in the middle of the field. And uh, John Paul Pierce elected to go to the other receiver. There he is cramping again right there. We had talked about it. Ken, you reported that just a few minutes ago. You could see him grabbing his right calf and uh, pulling that toe up on the cramp. Here's a good look at it again. Wrong receiver. You can see right there on the bottom of your screen as the camera pan passed. You had uh, Jeremy Single wide open on the 14 back to 12 yard curl. In the second half of this game, we were talking about what Carr had done with the football. They've had four possessions, 10 plays, 200 yards, three touchdowns, and their time of possession in the second half, three minutes and 13 seconds so far. There's 7.02 to play, and they lead by 10. The Cougars do. They'll get him to the boundary. They're going to have to press some fluids in him real fast. Question is, what are they going to do? Are they going to bring a quarterback as an, in the backup quarterback? Well, the, or backup, are they going to, the backup quarterback is Joshua Payne Morgan, and right. he suffered a hamstring injury this week, so he's not eligible tonight. Really? I didn't know that. So you can, you, now you can run, you can run Singleton of the Wildcat <laughs> there as you long go. as he doesn't cramp up again. I, th I think that's what we're going to have to see. We'll probably see uh, Jeremy Singleton come in as the Wildcat quarterback, and uh, I just don't know how much of a throwing threat Jeremy Singleton is. And I'm not sure that, that uh, the backup quarterback, Joshua Payne Morgan, as a freshman, uh, he can come in and perform well, but to be thrown into this situation as a freshman in a big game like this against a good defense and an explosive offense, that, that's tough to ask. I think, uh, I think you put Jeremy Singleton, if John Paul Pierce can't play, I think you wildcat him for the rest of this game because that gives you a lot of more explosiveness uh, with him at the wildcat. If you're interested in purchasing a DVD copy of today's game, send an email to prep, P-R-E-P, at sportsnola.com or call our offices at 504-681-0120 during normal business hours. You will receive a reply with more information on purchasing DVDs. Well, I know who's going to buy a few DVDs from this game. Uh, Race McMath is family. How about the Swellings? The Swellings will... Absolutely. Hey, John Paul Pierce, Anthony Spurlock's folks. I'll tell you what. I Santee think Marshall. And both offensive lines. I Absolutely. Both offensive lines have done an outstanding job tonight, and uh, those guys need to call in and pick up a DVD from the Carr offensive line as well as that uh, Brother Martin offensive line. We haven't line. mentioned the Edna Carr offensive line, and I know they're on defense right now, but hey, J uh, Jason, Jason Franklin at left tackle, Titus Jones at left guard. Lamar Johns at center, Tyree Jones at the right guard spot, and the right tackle, Anthony Lalone. Also, you've got Brandon Deserin and Corey Boudreaux resting those guys and coming in for action. They have done a fabulous job also. Well, I think we're going to get Singleton here at the Wildcat quarterback. That's who we'll get, Singleton coming in at the Wildcat quarterback slot. Look for Carr definitely stacking the box with eight, nine people and playing man coverage with maybe a free safety on top. 
I think they'll dare him to throw. They're going to they're going to want to see if he can throw the ball. Remember now, he can throw, but he cramped up earlier also in this heat and humidity. So this will be interesting to see what happens. Second down, 10 coming up for the Crusaders. They're at their own 20-yard line after the kickoff. They trail by 10, 49-39. And the starting quarterback is down with cramps. Out of the Wildcats, Singleton tries to run after the fake handoff to Bruce Jordan Swilling and fights his way maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Tyler Casby with the tackle down low. Too many people in the box. It's just hard to run. You've got five blocking and you've got eight people in the box. Somebody is coming untouched and that's exactly what happened. It's a numbers game, had nowhere to go. Here's third down and 11. He needs a big 11 yards with a good cut to the outside. He's got to get to the 30-yard line, and did he make it? It's going to be very close. Share set on by is rather is the one who wraps him up and forces him out of bounds. But let's see where the mark is. It happened in front of the bench. Tell you what, he does that mostly on his own. Got a nice block right there, though. And then he gets out there, and he makes things happen. Look how he sticks the ball out, having presence of mind to know where the sticks are, and he's got to get the sticks. And moved. look, with that stretch, watch when you see the line of scrimmage. He just made it to the 30 by sticking that ball out. First down, Brother Martin. They move the chains and keep this drive alive. There's a long throw by Singleton. Who says he can't throw? Yes, he can. Patrian Hughes, the tight end, will take it the distance for the touchdown. From the 30-yard line, he goes the distance, and that was John Paul Pierce back in at quarterback. A 70-yard touchdown score. Stacking the box right there, man coverage, blown coverage, great pass, great throw. Got the one-on-one -on -one situation. Great throw by Pierce. Great catch by Pattern Hughes. Wow. He extended, he didn't even have to extend that big 6-4 frame for the catch. He just caught it in stride and kept on going. Sam Walters trying to make this a three-point game one more time, and he does. It's 49-46, Carr with the lead, and we're not yet to the halfway point. We're 13 seconds away from the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Look at Hughes. Take it to the house. Tell you what, uh, it, it's blown coverage. Nobody out there. Wide open. But they snuck John Paul Pierce back in at quarterback after Singleton had run from the Wildcat a couple of times. Well, they're sneaky. That's <laughs> he got him back on there real quick, got him back into the game, and he throws the strike right there uh, for the touchdown. But that's what happens. You're, you're, you're playing the numbers game. As I keep saying, they had nine people in the box. Somebody didn't cover the receiver outside. They were in man coverage. And great, great effort. Puts it back to a three-point ball game. Four play, 80-yard drive, 55 seconds. Yes, that's the man who did it right there. Patrian Hughes, six foot four, 188 pounds, a senior, and he showed he could move. We've got a three-point game. Don't go anywhere, folks. We said back at the beginning of this game, you'd love this one, and you haven't been disappointed. Walters with a short kick. This is returnable. Dixon, the wide receiver with it, breaking tackles on the far side before being brought down near the 34-yard line, I believe. Let's see where they mark it. A lot better job right there by the Brother Martin coverage team. Dixon catches the ball, tries to run clear across the field like he did previous in the first half uh, on the, the, the touchdown on the kickoff, but there was nowhere to run. They stayed in their lanes. Brother Martin does a nice job fixing their coverage problem. Clark, second half passing, 5 for 5, 186 yards and three touchdowns. Dixon in the second half, four receptions, 121 yards, two touchdowns. Wow. He's having a great night. He's yes, got over 300. On the night, yards. Alden Clark on the night. Yeah, 319, over 300 looking good. Bryce Brown's got to be happy with that. Needs something big to happen here. Here's the handoff. He'll try the middle. 
And that will take us to the water break. Santee Marshall with a few over the left side. And with that, we will take a hydration break with the teams. 5.55 to play. We've got a thriller car by three. Crunch time, crunch time, 5.55 to play in this game. Carr has the lead and the football and is looking at second down and seven at the 37-yard line. There's that option. Clark with a good pitch to Santee Marshall, and Marshall is out near past the 50-yard line before Matthew Alfonso knocks him out of bounds. They're getting great yardage on the... Um on the speed option. And, uh, he might be cramping up a little bit, or did he just have a problem with the shoe? A 16-yard gain, first down car. They love they love that speed option. Their, uh, Brother Martin's not giving any run support on that, and uh, they're getting the ball out in the flank real quick. But it's also uh, a good job by those wide receivers from Carr out there blocking the defenders from Brother Martin on the edge. Going out of bounds, stops the clock. But a new set of downs for Carr as they drive. Martin showing a little stacking of the box, maybe some blitz on the run. Alden Clark. I think they heard me talking right there. Brandon Brown, number 24, does a nice job coming up and taking the quarterback on the option. He played his responsibility perfectly. Clark did not pitch the football, so thus uh, they don't have too much of a gain there. Dylan Walker, Jabari Watts combined to make the stop. Second down, nine. On the Brother Martin side of midfield. Now Carr has a speedy offense, but they don't mind that clock running a little bit. They may slow down just a tad bit. Well, a busted play there, and Clark just heads forward to make something out of nothing. Even with a three-point lead, they can't afford busted plays right there. Stacking up the inside right there. Uh, Matthew Clapp on right. the stop. It was Matthew Clapp, and I tell you what, uh, they've got to make sure that uh, they, they don't have these type of busts. They've got to keep that clock moving. 900 total yards of offense between these two teams tonight, and we have four and a half minutes left to play. And I'm cramping up up here because of that. <laughs> Your next cramping, looking left, looking right. The Crusaders on third and eight. They want to stop. Their fans do. Alden Clark will tuck it under. He'll run, gets a block, and he's inside the 35-yard line. And this, I think, is enough to move the chains. It is. That'll be another first down, and credit Alden Clark. When the Cougars have needed a big play, he comes through. Does a nice job pulling it down, but look at this block by number 26, Newman. Yeah, right out of your picture right there. This guy's had a great night, Warren Newman. That was a great hit right there. Great physical football. I like that. Look, you can see him breathing hard. That's the heat. That's the humidity, but nobody giving an inch. First and 10 at the 34-yard line of the Crusaders right up the middle. There's the hole. Santee Cooper, and he has a big run, moves the chains again. Benjamin Chaplin finally stops him. The right guard, Titus Jones, does a great job picking up the blitz right here. Hopefully we can see it. Ah, uh, didn't get to see it. It opens up a huge hole for Sante Marshall to be able to burst through on the inside zone play right there. But Titus Jones picks up the blitzing linebacker, just washes him down inside, creates a huge running lane for Sante Marshall. 
Crusader defense tried to strip that ball, but Santee Marshall did a fine job of holding on to it. Another first down, first and 10 at the 14-yard line of Brother Morton. The Cougars knocking on the door. They lead by three, trying to add to it. There's the swing pass to Marshall. But check that. That was Calfani Simmons on the catch. That's his second catch of the night. Alfonso with the stop. You see Carr getting back into a little bit more rhythm. A little hitting it on the inside with the inside zone, throwing it outside to the bubble screen right here, as you can see again on your uh, monitors and uh, televisions at home. They're back into their offensive rhythm right here, and they're burning a little bit of clock, which is what they need to do. Second down. About two. Right at about the, just inside the five yard line, right up the middle, big hole. Santee Marshall in the end zone for the touchdown. Edna Carr, third touchdown tonight for Santee. Brother Martin brings the blitz right there. The offensive line of Carr picks up the blitz perfectly. Santee Marshall walks into the end zone. He's limping a little bit, could be the cramp again. Uh, who knows, but I tell you what, he's having a great night. These two running backs, are really putting on a show tonight. Wow. Santee Marshall, Bruce Jordan Swilling, and there's the extra point attempt, and he hooked it way left. Carr still has a two-score lead. We're down to three minutes to play. Look out when we come back. Brother Morton's got to get in gear quickly. Welcome back, an eight play, 66 yard drive. Took three minutes and 13 seconds. Santee Marshall from five yards out, takes it in to give the Cougars a 55 to 46 lead. Only three minutes to go. And Brother Martin's got to score quickly. It's a two score ball game. This one finally gets returned, Chris Smith. Bounces off the pile, comes to the left side, gets some running room, and gives the Crusaders good field position out to the 41-yard line. It's a great setup right there to be able to put them in good field position. Effort, effort, effort by Chris Smith right there on his return. For Edna Carr, their first three possessions of this game all resulted in uh, the second half. First three possessions of the second half all resulted in touch, uh, touchdowns. and. Took three minutes and 13 seconds. That touchdown drive, eight plays, 66 yards, three minutes and 13 seconds. That's that's real fast. Here's a good look at the return again. Bounces it outside. Will set up good field position for the Crusaders. On first down, John Paul Pierce after the play fake tosses. It's deflected, and Singleton couldn't get a hand on it. Ball a little high, just couldn't get up to get the ball right there. I think he had a step on the receiver, was a little open, just not very well thrown ball. Play action pass. Should have hit him right in the chest with that ball. Yeah, it really went right through his hands, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still, he's got to bring that ball down a little bit. Kind of hung him out to dry. Second down, 10. At their own 41 with LaSare in motion. Play fake to him. And... Uh, We've got flags, so hold everything. Play blown dead. 
Oh, we got a timeout. Oh, out a timeout was called. Car call on timeout. So Carr calls their first timeout. Each team, by the way, has two timeouts remaining. Let's take a look and see what's ahead for both of these teams. Both undefeated coming into this game. First, the visiting Carr Cougars. They get the rest after beating a couple of 5As and right now leading another 5A. This 4A team gets a, a break, and then they start district play, and that's no walk in the park when you go to Riverdale. Well, you know, Riverdale's really turned their program around the past couple of years, but you look down that schedule, look at October 28th and November 3rd. Those are your district championship games, and he's going to have to be healthy coming into that, and Bill Chase won't be any pushover either. I bet you that uh, Warren Easton game is circled, as is McDonough 35 is circled, and it's going to be fun. Those are going to be your two district championship games right there. But, you know, the question is what we've seen tonight, wow. Car Cougar can play with anybody in 5A. Somebody better be real good to keep up with that man's team right there, Bryce Brown. He has built a powerhouse. He has developed a team that is just, if you're an opposing team's defensive coordinator, it's scary. How do you stop what this man has put together? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant game plan and talent by Bryce Brown. Same thing on the Brother Martin side. They've got so much talent, good game plan. They're going long, airing it out for Singleton. He's well covered, and it's incomplete covered. Well, as I said, by Chance Carroll. We're going to look at the Brother Martin schedule and see what they have ahead. Oh, as no. we watch Singleton yeah, there you go. go back to the, the huddle. Next, John Curtis, no bye week. You go right in, right from the frying pan into the fire. Well, I think they open up with district play with Curtis at Zephyr Field, and they go Aug. Their bye in the district is with Sulphur, which is no pushover. A solid football team from uh, southwest Louisiana. Third down, 10, and the pass is off its mark. There was a little bit. Let's go back and look at that to see if there was enough pressure on John Paul Pierce. But that was third down, 10. And fourth down coming up, fourth down 10. You've got to go for it here. You can't you can't punt it away to this explosive offense with 233 to play. Oh, I think you're going to see them go for it right here. He's sailing the ball a little high right here. I think that's because of the cramp in the leg. He can't come down on the front part of his right foot too well right, right now. Folks, first downs right past the 50-yard line, right past midfield. They've got to get there, and uh, this one's blown dead. Flag down. So let's see if Carr is going to give them five. Oh. oh, my goodness. What a tough time for a penalty that's going to now take you to fourth and 15 rather than fourth and 10. Mark Bonis probably beside himself. Fourth and 15. Tough situation right here. Going to still have to go for it. It's going to have to change play call most likely. The game, as we talked about earlier, last year was just as close. John Paul Pierce with the play fake with the toss. Incomplete intended to Eric Lasser, who was coming across and had a step. They just couldn't connect. Goes over on downs. A uh, few first downs. Uh, Carr should be able to run this clock out, but they're going to have to move the chains in order to do it. Well, somehow the... Brother Martin defense is going to have to find a way to create a turnover. Strip the ball out of the hands of Santee Marshall or Tyreek Luckett, the two running backs. I don't expect Bryce Brown to put it in the air. So Alden Clark, look for Alden Clark or Santee Marshall. He's number 21 behind Alden Clark. Look for them just to try to run this final 227 out. Brother Morton has two timeouts if they want to use it. Here's the stack of the box, caught him from behind. Gains maybe a yard on the play, and that's about it. But watch your clock, it's running with two timeouts for the Crusaders to use. That's all they have left. They cannot afford to let Carr move the chains. A first down for Carr, and that's it. Brother Martin's gonna have to use one here after this play, especially if Carr runs the football. They gotta stop the clock. Carr's explosive enough to throw it. And remember, they have a little bit of breathing, breathing room. This is still a two-possession game. 
At 55-46, Brother Martin needs a score. Onside kick and another score. First, they need the ball back. Now the timeout comes with 141 on the clock. So the Crusaders use their second timeout. Well, they've got to call timeout right there, and he's talking to his kids on the sideline. I'm talking about Mark Bonice. Well, this, about young, this young man right here limps off, and I'll tell you what, he deserves a rest somewhere along the line. He's even limping. He's covering that ball, holding on to that ball. You know Brother Morton's trying to strip that ball out of his right. hands. That's what Bonice is trying to tell his guys on the sideline right now, he and Lance Lathay. Make sure you're stripping the ball, all right, trying to pull on it, try to get that ball, rip it out. They're going to they're gonna have to waste their last time out sooner, real soon, to be able to get a chance to get the ball back with any type of shot on this score, kick an onside kick, and take another shot. Well, take a look at the Sports NOLA Top 10, Class 4A, and there's Ed Nakor right behind Neville, the team they lost to in the Dome last year, and it may come down to those two teams again this year playing for a state championship, and Bryce Brown says, it's my turn. I've got the explosive team, and we want to go get it. He's proving right now that they can play with anybody in Class 5A because that's their, their victories have been against 5A clubs. Third down nine. Bad toss. Boy, that was almost a mistake. Lucky for the core Cougars as Tyreen, uh, Tyreek Luckett gets hit by Brendan Brown. Almost lost that ball. And, whew, close one. There's your speed option again. Great job right there. Uh, assignment football coming down. Brandon Brown making the tackle in the backfield. It's been a big play uh, on the night for Carr. They knew they scored a touchdown early in the game off of it. They ran it three or four times. But right there, it's defensed perfectly by Brandon Brown. That should be Brother Martin's last time out. They've got one showing on the scoreboard. Maybe they didn't take the timeout. I, I, well, I thought they had. I it, thought early in the half they had a, a timeout used. Check. They had to take one on that fourth right, down right. earlier when. Yeah, the, the fourth down play earlier in the half right. they down had at the other two. end. Right, that's correct. And I just thought, I don't know if they took the timeout there or if Carr took the timeout just now. That was when John Paul Pierce had dropped his mouthpiece. All right, fourth down, 16. So Carr is going to punt this away with 135. Remember, they still have the two-score lead. He's just going to wait for his defenders to walk down the field. Nobody back for the Crusaders. And it's downed at the eight-yard line. So 125 on the clock. The Crusaders have a long way to go. They're about 92 yards away for the first score. Then they would need an onside kick and another score to either uh, second score would get there because of the missed extra point. So even a touchdown and a field goal or two touchdowns is what they need. Well, they're going to have to score quick, and that's going to be on the shoulders of this guy. He's got to make sure that uh, he's able to uh, get that ball on target. And I, right now, I think he's kind of hurting, especially with his lower right calf, to be able to, to get that ball on target. He's been sailing his balls. This deep in your own territory is the worst starting position for any team tonight, and it comes at the worst possible time for Brother Martin, but they didn't have anybody back to field the punt. So John Paul Pierce. As the snap, play fake. He'll move to the right. You can tell he's still hurting, cramping, and he just tries to dump it off the singleton incomplete, but he couldn't move very well, and he's down with another cramp. You could see it when he threw the ball. Well, uh, he, he's, he's not able to. He, he's sailing it. He's sailing everything he's throwing. He see, can't throw off right his there. front foot. He's got foot. the cramp. He can't move. Wow. He just can't throw off that right foot. That's his plant foot. That's the foot that he comes across the top on. And, uh, you know, he's struggling with that. Wow, that's tough. And, and that means you're either going to see, unless he just stays in there, you're either going to see Jeremy Singleton 
as a Wildcat, or you might see Bruce Jordan Swilling take the snap himself. Would they put him in the Wildcat slot? Let's take a look at Sports Nola's 5A top 10. Brother Morton, number four. They're going to play John Curtis next week. They are ranked second, and the team that beat Brother Martin in the quarters last year, Catholic High of Baton Rouge, now they won state last year, and they're right up there in the Sports Nola top ten as the best team in 5A. How do you like Ponchatoula in there? What's Hank Tierney doing there to sneak well, his he, 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 green he, wave right. into the top ten? He went to Acadiana last week and whooped Acadiana there. What an impressive win for Hank and his Ponchatoula green wave. Rummel? Right back, no chase 4K this year, but still a good enough team to be ranked in the top 10. It's not just the quarterback. Now John Curtis was in Shreveport last week. They beat West Monroe in a big game. Uh, I think they call it the uh, battle on the border up there in Shreveport. Uh, Mark Bonis is thinking right now, here goes my starting quarterback. My Wildcat quarterback, who's also a wide receiver and sometimes cornerback, Jeremy Singleton, has cramped up a number of times tonight. Do I put Jordan Swilling in the Wildcat slot? And the answer is no. Oh, Instead, don't. you're coming in with Mark Gittleson, a senior backup quarterback, 5'10", 161. He's seen very limited action this year. He has gotten into a couple of ball games, and he's being asked to do a lot. Those eyes might be pretty wide. He has not thrown a pass this year. The lefty, a short one. They're going to look for Singleton to make things happen on his own. He breaks one tackle but goes down at the 29-yard line. Clock is running now. Brother Martin does not have a timeout remaining. The clock will stop while they move the chains after the 20-yard gain, but Brother Martin cannot stop the clock. They have no timeouts left. Remember, it's still a two-score ball game, not a one-score ball game. Screen to Singleton. That's all they can do right now, and Singleton's hit hard and dropped immediately by Sheldon Celestine. And nowhere to go. Sheldon Celestine comes up, snips out the screen, and puts a nice hit on Jeremy Singleton. 49, 48, another, clock ticking. Another look at it right here. He dumps the screen. Here comes Celestine. Boom, right there. Nice play. Great defensive effort. It's hard to rally your troops when your starting quarterback and your Wildcat quarterback have both been cramping up and neither can take snaps. There's the toss out to Bruce Jordan Swilling. Mark Gittleson in the game now at quarterback. He is the third quarterback used. Fourth if you want to count Jeremy Singleton as a Wildcat. Here comes eight back into the game. Ah, John, John Paul, Paul Pierce. Pierce coming back in. So. Here's John Paul Pierce. He's still cramping, favoring that leg. Throws, complete to Hughes. He's hit, and the, will they call that incomplete? They will. Incomplete pass because Patrine Hughes was really whacked as he hit it. They might have tried. This might have been a little chicanery right here. This might have been the old hook and ladder maybe. They do run that. Uh, I've seen them run it before. Uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't look like it. No, you would have seen from this it, angle, it does not. Right. You would have seen Swelling coming farther in to yes. be able to catch the toss. The from lateral. This, from the side view here, it looked like that. From the end zone view, no way. There's a shot downfield, but it's going to be too little, too late. We're down to the final 14 seconds here, and that's going to do it. That was fourth down. For the Crusaders, they're going to turn it over on downs, and John Paul Pierce comes limping off the field. He and Jeremy Singleton tonight, the two guys that can really play from that quarterback position, both cramping up, and their ability to do things negated just by the heat and humidity of what they had to deal with. Carr should be able to kneel this out. It'll be all over. Hey, how about Bruce Bryce and this 4A team? 3-0 to start the 2016 season against three 5A teams, all pretty good. St. Paul's, Landry Walker, and Brother Martin. Well, I think what he does is he makes a statement. He makes a statement, and uh, it's not only making a statement right here in uh, the city of New Orleans, but he's making a statement to the guys up in Monroe, Neville. 
You better believe it. Bryce Brown, congratulations. Fine win. Congratulations to both coaches because they both played very well. Your final thoughts on this game. I tell you what, great. If, if you love offense, you got it all tonight. Uh, the two running backs were phenomenal. Great jobs by both offenses. Well, I want to thank you, Wade, and what a great game. Hope, folks, that you enjoyed this one. Thanks for joining us on the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. Next week, it's a battle of St. Charles Parish's Hondell faces Destrahan in a District 7 5A matchup. Watch it live on SportsNola.com next Friday at 7 and catch the rebroadcast Saturday, September the 24th at noon on WHNO. For Wade Kaiser, Les East, our entire crew, our man Tommy Cooper, and Alan Thrifley in the booth with us here, I'm Ken Berthelot. Our final score again, 55-46, Carr with a victory over Martin. Good night, everybody.